Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Clay, Alabama. Alabama. We are at Clay Chalkville High School, home of the Clay Chalkville Cougars. I am Nick Belovsky alongside me tonight, the venerable one, John Godwin. John, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Along for the ride tonight was Brent Collins. Brent, good to see you. What, my Nick? What? Fabio-esque. So, salacious? So, can we say that? <laughs> Okay. I don't think we know what it means, but go ahead and say it. <laughs> salacious, the salacious one. Fabio. Glad to be here. Huh? Brent Collins. Hey, I tell you, it's football weather tonight, isn't it? Well, we are in the hood. We are in the hood. Jerry Hood Field. Jerry right. Hood Field. And uh, at Clay Chauville, I think the Caterhood Raiders have been down here a couple of times. And if those old Raiders want a couple of changes, uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, grass field anymore. It's uh, fake grass. And uh, but for those old Raiders who came down here a couple of years ago, well, it's been more than a couple of years. It's been a number of years, but it's a it, it's it's a very tight place. They shoehorn this uh, field in here, and I think the the end zones are very short. Uh, the the sidelines there's probably five yards of sideline. I mean, I, I guess if you put somebody out of bounds, you're gonna be in the fence and in the stadium. So. Very shallow sidelines here. You know, they, they having to put pads up on the uh, on the basically on the fences to keep the players from, especially on the uh, visiting side, to uh, from running into the stands. We are sitting in the get in the home stands, just outside the press box. You may notice that there is a uh, concert going on. No, it's just uh, piped in music here. Not really sure who we're listening to, John. This is what you listen to, isn't uh, it? That's Coolio. MC I think that's Coolio. Coolio. I think no, Coolio. that ain't Coolio. That ain't Coolio. That's not Coolio. <laughs> okay. anyway. anyway, Snoop Dogg. Snoop no. Dogg. We are it's not Snoop Dogg. Yeah. But hey, I will say you guys did a great job planning the trip down today, and uh, we we were treated to a nice to a nice meal tonight. Nikki's West, is that right? That is correct. Tell Nikki, us, Nikki went to Nikki's West. Well, we we need to talk. We need to listen to Coach Adcock first. We got, hey, we got five we, listeners. We got five listeners. Then we're going to come back. Then we're going to come back and talk about Nikki's West. Before you hit play, everybody, we need to turn our microphones off, or they won't hear Coach Adcock. Well, hold on just a second. Yeah, I'm not ready to hit play yet. I will right now with the uh, Coach Adcock show. Welcome to the Red Raider Preview Show with Coach Jerry Adcock. Week 11, Coach. Yeah, I like it. Or is this week 12? It's, well. Actually, week 12 because we had an open week. But but the way we count it with the state is actually week 11. Week 11. Yeah. And I would like to say that the grass has turned brown, but it ain't grass and it's still green. <laughs> yeah. But the practice field getting brown. <laughs> practice field. We practice up there most of the time, so uh, so that's a so good. So you get in the brownness. Oh right? yeah, okay. got to have that brown. You got to have that. All right, before we um, talk about tonight's matchup um, in the first round of playoffs, got to go back to last week and um, um, homecoming in the rain against the Hun- Huntsville Crimson Panther. Didn't come out too well, did it, Coach? No, we didn't. Uh, Somewhere we left the ball game on the practice field that week and left it somewhere else. And something, you know, we had a good week of practice, good week of preparation. I, I thought the kids were really, you know, what we needed to be during the week. Uh, we weren't. I, I didn't feel like at practice. None of our coaches felt like that we were uh, that we were operating off of emotion and and you know just the adrenaline rush from the, the week before after that win. We felt like we. would put it aside, and we were where we needed to be. Uh, knew we were going to play a good football team. That was a lot like us. They had, they were a handful of plays from being 72 also. And, uh, you know, uh, we kind of we kind of lost something. And, uh, you know, it was beyond our control uh, as coaches. And uh, so, uh I think the kids understand it now. It's, 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 you know, kids don't learn by you teaching them. They learn by them falling this day and time. They learn by falling on their face and having to get up. And so, uh, so I think we learned a valuable lesson. Uh, the kids realized that, that 
we lost an edge and we lost it during that time when we should have been honing in. And, uh, and, and, and we talked some of the, me and some of the more mature kids, we talked about it and that's exactly what they felt like. And, uh, well, you know, and, and even in the gloom and doom of the result, you know, we got down in the red zone several times, just three times and didn't, couldn't, you know, we're on a, Nine, we're on 11, we're on the 12, we can't cash it in, and that's that's on us. And then we do score, uh, put Mack in at quarterback. Ellis Ellis got hit in the back and had some muscle spasms, couldn't raise his arm. And uh, Mack came in and did a really nice job, went four for six and had the 75-yard touchdown pass to Jaden. And, uh, you know, came out there and kicked the on side kick, had a really good kick, and he just took the perfect hop at the wrong time in that guy's hands, of course. 37 seconds left in the game, you know, but hey, we, you we, fight we, always, end, we yeah. always think we got a chance, but we, uh, you know, when, when you don't get yourself mentally ready and sharp enough to play uh, and you just, it was, it was one of the, it was the one of the most, uh, I don't know. I, I walked off that field that night and it was just like, you know, I'm sitting out there seeing it happen, knowing it, you can scream and yell all you want to, or you can you can try to reel them in. What are you going? You're going to try to keep encouraging. You know, you, you're going through that full gamut, and you know your kids. We fussed a little, and we encouraged a little, and we prodded a little bit, and we hugged a little bit, and we did a little bit of everything. But when when you when you don't have the mental edge you need to have to go into competition. Uh, you can't you can't just flip a switch and you know they made three plays they made three plays and uh that were huge in the game now, now they made more plays than that but they made three that were huge and um had had two pass plays that were big time pass plays at crucial times and, and had a zone read on it with a quarterback and we didn't do anything we were coached to do on that play well you know it, it just it, it almost seems like you had one team out there that this was their last game of the season and they were playing like it. And then another team knew that regardless of the outcome, they was playing the next week. Yeah. And so, I, you know. It's I, hard to say. You know, it, it was frustrating. Very, I was very disappointed in our performance. Well, very let me ask you this. Any any game balls, anybody? Well, I tell you, uh, Z.J. Matthews played really well last week. He uh, led the team in tackles. And I knew – he and Jacob McCray played exceptionally well. I mean, our defense, it, we didn't play a lot of intensity, but we had 12 tackles for losses, and uh, which is huge. Anytime you get a tackle for a loss this day of time, is huge. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we both played on the wet field. It yeah. didn't bother them. It bothered us. We what about injuries? We got any? No injuries. A Ellis okay? Ellis is fine. Uh, they kind of want us to keep him from contact Monday, Tuesday. He didn't miss a snap. And uh, uh, we're fine. Um, but ZJ and Jacob McCray played outstanding on defense again. And uh, glad. so those guys had a, had a good performance. Uh, Owen Poovey punted really well right at a 40-yard average. Uh, we had to punt the ball six times. The one kickoff he had was was six inches from going into the end zone. Yeah. And uh, he's right there on the goal yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. The guy it. caught it on the place he could catch it. And then the onside kick we attempted was really a pretty good kick. It took a right hop at the right time. And that guy just went up higher than us and made the play. All right. Well, let's put that in the rearview mirror because Clay Chalkwell's coming up tonight. Um, let me. I did a little research on it. You know, it's it's not the place is not called Clay Chauvel. It's Clay. Yeah. There's a section of Clay called Chauvel. Yeah. But it's ten thousand two hundred ninety one people, at the, the the last census, that would be Hartsel type of, of a town, one horse town, Clay. Um, Drew Gilmer, fifty four and ten. He's tw he's ten and zero this year. Last year he was eleven and two. The year before that, ten and three. The year before that, twelve and two. The year before that, in two thousand seventeen, he was eleven and three. So Deuce has some good teams. Right? He has. He's he had has. some really good teams. And he was a uh, an assistant on those teams that we played back in early, like two thousand fourteen, all back in there. Too. Do you know him good. that well? Yeah, 
No, I really didn't. You know, Coach Jerry Hood and I were really good friends. He was a head he coach. He was a head coach before. During, during all, a lot of that time. And uh, I've known every one of their head coaches, three of them really well. Uh, Tony Pugh, the first time we ever played them in 98 and beat them up here. And they were the, just starting at school. And then uh, I knew Tony well from Auburn. And uh, then he, he was assistant at Hewitt Trustful with Jack Wood. And, um, and then uh, I knew Hal Riddle and I became really good friends. They beat us in 99. And Jerry and I became good good friends through our, you know, through all of our stuff. I actually coached against him. We He was the head coach at Oak Mountain when they beat us in 2005, uh, second round. Beat us 2005, and they went on. They were about the second best team in the state that year. Hoover beat them. And the only close game Hoover had in the playoffs that year. And, uh, well, and that, Jerry took that job. And then Drew had been working for Jerry for some time. They just moved him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And it, it done, I'm going to tell you, done a super job. They're very well coached, very well coached. Well, in their region, they're 10-0. and 0, And then the, the next three, were I think, were all tied, and they had to go through the tiebreaker. But Jackson Olin ended up number two, and they'll be playing Coleman. Coleman. And then Pensa Valley was number three. And they'll be playing Muscle Shoals at Mus- at Muscle Shoals, yeah. and then Gardendale, their number four is playing at Hartsel. Yeah. So all those teams, you know, Jackson Olin's eight and two, Pennsylvania Valley seventy three, Gardendale's eight and two, and then you look down their record, they they played Shays Valley forty to nothing, beat them. Hueytown fifty seven to forty. I think Hueytown has a pretty good offense. They got a very good offense. Jasper it was sixty eight to twenty one. Gardendale forty six to nothing. Minor fifty to seven, Jackson Olin forty six to fourteen, Mortimer Jordan fifty eight to nine, Pinson Valley forty two to twenty three, Huffman fifty four to nothing, and Oak Mountain who just beat James Clemens, who was undefeated in seven A. They beat them last night thirty three to thirty five. They beat Oak Mountain forty eight to nothing. Yeah. Now Oak Mountain didn't have their quarterback against him. Okay. He didn't play, and he's a he's a heck of an athlete. He's a he is a heck of an athlete. You know, these guys, I think overall, you know, it's, it's relatively new school. Started in 1996 was their first team. They, they played 26 seasons and 22 of those. He's gone to the, to the playoffs. They're 509 and 114. Three and one versus Decatur. And the last time we played was 2014. They beat us 38 to, 38 to 10. Yeah, and overall, course. we got a 71% winning rate. So – I got to looking. It's a little video place. And, in fact, you can throw a rock a couple of times and hit Pinson Valley to the west and um, Hewitt Trussell to the south. And, yeah. and all of Well, it's really – they pretty much split Hewitt Trussell. Hewitt Trussell used to get some of these kids. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, in, that, you're in that north part of Jefferson County mm-hmm. right there where you got – Hewitt Trustful, Pinson Valley, Gardendale. More of a Jordan in there. And, yeah. But but you take that little area right in there and you 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 just look at three of those teams we just called out with 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 Clay Chalkville, Pinson Valley, they're five yard, five miles apart. Gardendale's right there at them. Those three, they have they're they're really getting a good pool of athletes. Where right are the where's the just good genes? Yeah, and a lot of those kids are, you know, their families are moving out of, you know, out of Birmingham into the just, you know, just moving out to the outskirts, out in the suburbs where a lot of growth is going and, and new schools and and uh, stuff like that. And, and, they, and, you know, you think about a few years ago, everybody's headed toward Vestavia and, and Spain Park and Hoover. And, and now they're and, so big, they're looking, hey, yeah. let's go to. So, so you, you know, you just had an expansion outwards and. You know, I mean, you think about it, like Chelsea. Chelsea is a, a six A. They're in the playoffs. They're four and six, but their school is just just growing by leaps and bounds. Helena, growing just unbelievable. Those schools are, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of talk. That Chelsea will probably be a seven A school next year. I don't know. Haven't seen the numbers. Don't know about the numbers, but that's the kind of growth that they're having. So. You know, you get a lot of that, and these guys, uh, and you got good coaches. Uh, they and, and I'm gonna tell you, they've taken this school, and and football is important right there. Football is the main thing at that school, and uh, 
They're, it, it's important to them. Uh, it's important administratively. They've got, <laughs> they're basically, their schedule is built around what football needs. I'm talking about their school schedule is. And uh, they make it a priority to everything. And, uh, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty good situation to be in. Well, let's talk about them particularly offensively and defensively and special teams. What 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 well, they got? Offensively, uh, they're now I'll say this: they're not as big as some of the Clay Chapel teams we saw in the past. Like in 2014, they went 14, 15 and 0 and won it. Yeah. Uh, they're not as big as that team, uh, but they're uh, they're. Their, their linemen are almost like cookie cutters. You know, they're almost all the same size. They're all 6'1", 6'2", 250, 260. And they're very well coached. Uh, the quarterback, 6'2", 205, he, he doesn't look like a high school quarterback. He doesn't throw like a high school quarterback. He looks kind of like a, 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 a college guy running around out there with little kids sometimes. I mean, he's, he's very athletic. He's got a great arm. He is the best quarterback we have seen to date. He really is. And we've seen a couple of good ones. But he's the best we have seen. Uh, and, you know, he's kind of like the, the guy in Alabama. They they want him to throw it. He, they realize, he can run it. Oh, he can run it and hurt you. But they want him throwing a football. He's looking to throw it when he drops back. He's not looking to run. So he's very well coached. The receivers – in the past, we've seen six four and six five receivers out there. These guys are five ten, five eight, and they can fly. They're the fastest. Coach Gilmer told me that this is the fastest team he's ever coached. And offensively, defensively, O line, D line, they they're fast. Running backs, they got Derrick Henry playing. I think <laughs> he's coming back on Friday night. But they've got a big running back, number twenty two, and then they've got a small one, number six. The smaller ones, like 5'8", 5'7", 185, uh, like a tank. And uh, so they're, they'll they run the zone game. They'll run the counter game. Uh, they throw, they'll spread you out. They use a lot of formations, a lot like Hartsell and, and Athens has. They throw a lot of formations at you. Uh, they, they will use tight end in their formation some. But they, they stay what we refer to as 10 or 20 personnel most of the time uh, without a tight end. And um, they, they're, they're, you know, they can run it, they can throw it, uh, and, and they do a great job doing it. Uh, defensively, they're very blitz conscious. Uh, they run about five different fronts, and they will blitz. They'll run blitz. They will. They will have guys coming from all different directions. And what they, you know, as as I look at them, our perception is that they're trying to get you to see all this pressure coming from tackle to tackle, and then make you run outside. Well, you run outside, that they got you where they want you because those cats can run. Their safeties are active. Everybody got tackled well. Uh, they're, mo the, you know, base. You, I would say they're probably base out of a four-two-five, uh, which means it's a, it's a four-man front, two linebackers, and they, they're playing five DBs. So they're playing three safeties, and, and those guys can run. They can cover. Um, they'll get in a three-man front a lot and, and do a lot of, Games, they'll do a lot of slanting, a lot of moving linebackers around. So, uh, you know, they do a tremendous job with with what they're trying to do to force you into bad situations. And they're just using their speed. And here's the deal. They're slanting, they're blitzing, they're, they're exchanging gaps, but they know where they're going. It's not, it's not chaos. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they know where they're going. If these guys are going here, these guys are going here, and, and you can't. And so we worked at that all week. Uh, Is it yeah. a sound defense? Yeah, they're very sound, very sound. I mean, they're averaging 11 points a game, giving up 11 points a game. And 40 of that was to to uh, Hewitt Town. So they're very sound. Uh, they, you know, the thing we're going to do, you're going to see us slow the game down. You're going to see us do a lot of check with me. 
uh, as we refer to it, because what we want to do is is to get them. We want to find out where they are, get them on their heels, and see if they'll if they will tip their their blitzes to us. Uh, we're going to do see see what they we can do there if we can find where they're blitzing, and uh, and and then. You know, we're, I'll be honest with you, we're not going to try to run the ball outside. The best way to beat speed is to run right at it. Uh, you don't beat speed by running sideways. I, I've been I've been watching everybody that has tried to return a kickoff against them, and everybody tried to run sideways. Well, that plays right into their hands. I mean, they got the whole defense lined up over there on kickoff time. And you were trying to run sideways, there's about six of them going to run you down. So, you know, the one team that, it caught the ball and tried to block a few guys to go straight ahead with uh, uh, Pinson Valley and ran one back for a touchdown. They are my, either Pinson Valley or, or Jackson Olin. I forget. I mean, they run together. So I've watched it so much. But um, so, you know, our whole thought process is make them, you know, don't give them that, that don't give them that creativity to, Create chaos for you. Slow the thing down. Uh, see what you're getting. Gap down backer, kick out, put block down, kick out, run your tracks. You're gonna run into somebody. And that's what we tell our linemen. If you if you're released, it's your where you're supposed to go, the gap you're supposed to go, you're gonna run into somebody. And you better block him when you do. And so that's our whole deal. Quick game, get the ball out of our hands and uh uh you know, we want to see. You know, are they going to play? The, we've seen them play a lot of mixed coverage, where they're they're manning up one side and zoning the other. So we're going to see. You know, are they giving us some windows to throw in, quick windows, and we'll try to take advantage of that. Kicking game wise, they they don't ever kick extra point. They go for two every time. Uh, Is that because they don't have a kicker? I, I don't think the kicker's real good. They hadn't had to punt much, so. <laughs> They do some shifts so so far as punt block, we're gonna play base defense. They do not punt the ball well at all. They haven't had to and they don't. So uh we're gonna we're gonna play a base defense. Uh unless we happen to if we got them backed up, we'll drop one guy back, but still gonna play base defense. Uh they get the ball off in one snap, one step. So uh you know, as far as that's concerned, you know, of course, we worked on our punt game uh, a lot and uh, protection because of their speed. Uh, kickoff, kickoff return is a matter of they don't kick the ball deep. We think we got a plan for that. And uh, and our and kickoff, we're, we're going to try to kick it deep. We're going to try to kick it in the end zone. You know, we challenge Owen to do it, and he wants to do it, and he has a mindset to do it. So we'd, we'd love for them to start on the twenty. So that you know, that's kind of where it unfolds on us. Well, defensively, I mean, we've got to be able to to limit a lot of what they're going to try to do. Yeah, yeah, and and we got, you know, we've had to take our scheme and and, and tweak a few things to give us a little more. Uh, you know, to kind of help us a little bit more in coverage. And at the same time, stop a run. Uh, so, you know, we we've opened our stuff up a little bit, but you know, we we set our whole defense based on rules, and it, we we pretty much play what we call camp rules. What we put in, you know, it, we never have to call a defense hardly. It, they, we we run our defense by your alignment and your personnel. When you come out, we see it. We got a call. And so, and it, and our kids, you know, oh, there's a lot of things you could invent and say you ought to do. Try, try implementing that with a bunch of high school kids to be sound. Hard there. to do. Yeah, we we tried that a few years ago, and it didn't happen very good. Well, let me ask you this: when, when you go through a week of preparation, how how individual do you get? I mean, and what I mean by that is, I mean, do you? Tell your kids the name of the guy that's going to be they're going to be playing against. No, we don't. I mean, we have before. We really don't. Uh, I, it, it, different groups approach it different ways, mm-hmm. and you know, 
we'll put starting lineups on the board sometimes. Sometimes there's so many guys that they use, it's hard to have start lineups. But we're usually going to put start lineup up and their their name, their number, their height, weight, and the year they are. And if there's any key things about them. Then sometimes, you know, you'll just kind of run through it. You'll cover it on a board. For the most part, you get teams like this. They, they know who the guy's number, what his number is. They may not know his name. If, you know, if they're playing a guy around here, they'll know his name. So, you know, they, they have to know certain things about numbers and, and who these guys are. You know, it's just like we tell them, look, guys, if you see them line up in extra point or a field goal, and they've got their starting center up there. Guess what? He they ain't fixing something. <laughs> it's going to gonna be a fake. Yeah. And so these are little things that you talk to them about. You know, it, even as far as you do think more things like, hey, the, the snapper on the punch number twenty six. So if if they line up and punt, and twenty six ain't the snapper, then you guys got to know that. Or if you line up and punt and you need to alert everybody, hey, 26 is a snapper. Tell everybody because it'll be like happening at Hazel Green. Their snapper was a, a number 46, I think. They ran the fake punt, and he was down there as deep. I mean, he's an ineligible receiver because he's, just, he, he's the center. He's covered. Yeah. And he's down there as deep as the receiver was on that fake. But we knew it, but the officials didn't see it because they don't pay attention to what that guy's number is to ID it. So, well, let me ask you this, and, and you know, if, I don't say mystery question or anything, but with the advent of social media, yeah, I mean, do do any of the kids ever have any interactions with uh, with opposing teams that you know of? No, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, we that always, was a quick question. <laughs> we we always tell these guys, we always tell these guys right here, you know, stay off social media when it gets, I mean, don't get into the, yeah, you know, yeah, the, back yeah I mean, that's pretty childish. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not into, I'm not into the, the internet warriors. Yeah. Uh, most people doing all the fighting and bragging on. on well, I just noticed, on like last, stuff. It, I'm it, just not a big fan of like that. Like the other night against Huntsville. There was a lot of, I don't want to say good sportsmanship, but I guess I am, you know, so picking up, patting on a, you know, well, and I, I don't know if it was because of your relationship with well, their coach. I just think it's, I think that comes from coaches having respect for other programs, you know, and in, in the way coaches try to coach their kids uh, about, you know, knock a rear end off and pick them up, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and there's, you know, there's teams that you have that mutual respect for. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I mean, that's that's honestly the way it should be. All right, well, let me ask you this. Anything, any magic that you're bringing from the Jackson Olin game? You know, I mean. Because <laughs> two years, was it two years ago? Yeah, three, three, years, three years. Three years ago, yeah. same thing. Number yeah. one, undefeated, uh, on the know, road. You know, I would imagine you would like to have Duper back because, man, he must. He, I'm reading the paper. He is doing fantastic. He's lighting it up at Center College. Uh, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think it's the magic. The thing that I, I see in these guys' eyes, I see a determination, and I see a lot of grit, and that's what we talk to them about. Is, you know, I talked to him yesterday about grit. It's what gets you here. It's not talent. It's not your athletic ability. It's not how good you look. It's not your IQ. It's it's that it's that passion and the 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 ability to persevere for a long range goal. And uh, and I said you guys have that. And that's what we got to go down there with. And I said you know they've done studies among people and, and psychologically and found that you know. Usually, grit is inversely related to talent. Is that that stuff you say that he needs to put in his neck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah, kind of. But uh, I think some people know what we're talking about with that in the neck business. But you know, I mean, these guys, uh, you know, it, I'm careful sometimes as to how we we, we kind of tell 
we really hadn't mentioned the Jackson Olin thing that much. I mean, we a little bit. You this think is, they have? Oh, yes. I mean, the players have. No, I'm talking about Clay Chalk. I don't, I don't know. You, I know. Get, you, yeah, you well, got to be. Yeah, they probably You have. know that they have. But, you know, the thing about every, every team's a different team. And 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 these kids right here have their – they are one team that has their own identity, and they don't have to fall back on somebody else's identity to go out and prove what they're about to do. And that's that's the thing about this bunch is different. Yeah. And, that's, and that's, that's what kills you when you're sitting here at four and six and know you're better than that. Uh, and you can point to a lot of different things, but, uh, you know, you, you hadn't gotten it done. But they're, they, they've transcended a lot to get to this point. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny you say that just because maybe that's the reason for last week. Yeah. Maybe that was the reason for last yeah. week to teach our guys, hey, you saw what Huntsville did. You know how they, what their mentality was, and maybe we need to have the same thing. You know, we don't. We, they're going to look at our record and go, "Well, you know, listen, who are we playing next week? You know, yeah. let's work on them a little bit. Maybe we can come up and do it." Just like having a Jackson, Jackson Olin when I came down from halftime to go to the to the concession stand, get some drink, go to the restroom, and all that. And this lady, in pure frustration, asked me, "Are y'all from Georgia?" Decatur, Georgia, and it's like they they weren't prepared for us. No. And maybe you know, I think that's that I'd be that's one of the things I'm going to be interested to see if how well prepared they are. For I us. think they will be. I mean, I do. Well, I, I think they, they will be. be. I mean, you don't you don't score the points they've scored on people. They they played some really good teams. They played some teams that might not have been that good, but you don't score those kind of points if you're not prepared. Well, well, coach. Um, any key to the game other than let's you know, don't pl- – please don't you know, try to give them 28 points? Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing that we've done this year. Is Make we've, them earn we've, it. We've, we've, we've uh, started slow, and, you know, we've sat here and tried to figure out what in the world. And a lot of that just comes down to kids getting their self where it needs to be to get there. And, uh, you know, some of that just – there's certain things that is, is on them that they're going to have to get done. And – uh we're going to try to handle the rest of it. One of my favorite movie scenes, you got Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. When Tom Hanks is sitting on that bridge and he's fixing to die. And he, and he says, pulls earn, Matt this, Gates, earn, you know, this. earn it. Earn yep, it. And that's a good point. Very good point. All right, Coach. Well, you know what time it is. It's a great day to be the Cad Red Raider. You've been listening to the Red Raider preview show with Coach Jerry Adcock. This is John Godwin. We're going to get ready for you. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Clay, Alabama, for the Decatur High School Red Raiders versus the Clay Chalkville Cougars in round one playoff action here in Clay, Alabama. I hope that you can hear me. Can you hear me, John? I can hear you. (laughs) Okay, I hope the folks at home can hear us. Uh, We're right under the press box underneath some speakers here, and so... The, the Clay Chalfle folks have been very accommodating to us. But right, as a drum line, they got the some uh, very loud speakers. Line, anyway, sitting to my left, the venerable one, John Godwin. Hello, John. Hello. Hello. Also <laughs> along for the ride tonight was the salacious one, <laughs> Brent Collins. Good evening, Brent. Fabio. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Nick. Down. Hey, I tell you, if we were complaining about not being in the elements in Athens, we're making up for it tonight. <laughs> well, we are. We're, we're the, outside, uh, right outside the press box. So, and not on our home side. We're on the Clay Chalkville side, and uh, in in the background, you hear all the PA system. It's going to be a loud one tonight, guys. Well, I'm rather comfortable. I'm glad that uh, Godwin brought this blanket for us all to get up underneath. Thank you, John. <laughs> we're not sure. <laughs> well, it's going to be a, a interesting night. When you talk about the football football game, the actual game, and uh, that we're going to get to play, and you know, we all three of us have been talking to some of the Clay Chalkville folks around here. Brent, you know, you you talked to one guy that uh, gave you some good information on just the just kind of what we're up against tonight. Yeah, I mean, it, I think uh, Nick, you might have done some research on this before, but uh, their coach was telling us they got nine, at least nine legitimate D one athletes on the field. I don't know if all those are seniors or not, but I do know their, uh, their quarterback, 
Sounds like he's going to Louisville. Um, right. Sounds like they're uh, one of their receivers going to Tennessee. Tennessee. And it also, uh, he did mention that you'll probably find uh, Auburn, Alabama, some of the big, big schools here uh, tonight um, undercover, but they'll be here scouting the, the other players. So. A little bit of information about Clay Chalkle. They are 10 and 0, number one rank in uh, 6A. They are. They have beaten Shades Valley. I'm not even going to tell you wins and losses because they have won all these. Shades Valley, 40 to nothing. Hueytown, 57 to 40. Jasper, 68 21. Gardendale, 46 nothing. Minor, 50 to seven. Jackson Olin, 46 to 14. Mortimer, Mortimer Jordan, 58 9. Pinson Valley, 42 23. Huffman, 54 nothing. And Oak Mountain, 48 0. They have scored no less than 40 points in every ball game. And for kicks, they have four shutouts so far on the season. The telling mark is this one. Their points for is 509 points against 114. Guys, you're going to win football games when you can score and you can keep the other team out of the end zone. Yeah. And uh, like um, Coach Adcock said, uh, you know, their coach is. Is, is really talking about how speedy they are. And, and we, we were looking at them warming up, and, of course, they was, uh, didn't have any shoulder pads on. But, man, those dudes can fly. I mean, even the even the offensive linemen, defensive linemen, look like they are, are big guys but uh, also have that speed component to it. And, you know, it's a formidable-looking uh, group of kids. Now, they're not any more formidable-looking than, uh, than Jackson Olin was a couple of years ago. And uh, – you know, but it's going to be different because in Jackson Olin, one of the things that, that was in our favor was that it was a deluge of, of rain. Right, and then, so that was just, a, it, it's not going to be that way tonight. The track's going to be super fast. And, uh, you know, that's going to, I think that that helps Clay Chalkful. And, uh, you know, you, if you're Decatur, we've got just got to come out and kind of weather a, a storm that's going to happen at the beginning. You know, one of their, one of the, uh, the way the the guy that we were talking to uh, explained to Clay Chauvel guys is they're they're just happy go lucky kids. I mean, he said, you know, he said if you spend any time around them, they're silly, and uh, you know, just uh, those kind of kids. You know, they're not, uh, uh, you know, dead serious and all that. They just go out and have fun, and uh, you know, and it's going to be a fun night for us too to to be able to see how we match up against a team like this. You know, it's good to be back in the playoffs after three years hiatus. And, uh, you know, some of these kids, I mean, we'll get into talking about a lot of the seniors tonight because, you know, uh, this could be their last game. So, uh, but some of these kids played in that Jackson Olin game, right? Yes, I did. I mean, we've got a couple of the guys uh, that started as freshmen and have started four years, at least three or four years. You got Banks, Dement, Jacob McRae, um, Hunter Claiborne. Those guys have played, and um, hopefully they'll bring their leadership tonight and help us get off to a fast start. That is correct. You don't have to get off to a got to get off to a quick start. No mistakes, and you got to make more. You got to make them play your game, and uh, we definitely can't. You know, need to play their game. And I think if you look back on our season so far. That, that there's been a number of times that we've gotten behind early and, uh, you know, we're not a good come from behind kind of team. And, you know, it's like, we just need to, to be aware of that and, and not, uh, on a kickoff. I mean, if we get the ball, if we kick off, we, we don't need to let them tar- to take it back. Or if we, we get the ball first, we don't need a, a, a mistake that hurts us early. And, you know, it's just one of those things coach Adcock talked about, you know, we're going to try to slow the game down. And uh, if we can do that, then then I think that helps us. And so uh, – but you can't – but you, we're going to have to be able to to do what we couldn't do against Huntsville. Because when we get in the red zone, we come away with some points. And uh, we were there – but Coach Ack, I said five times and, you know, just couldn't come up with any points. And we just can't do that against a team the caliber of, of Clay Chalk. And I liked what you talked about, about – the Huntsville game, you know, it was kind of a hangover game after Athens and it's a good learning game, but you can't come out here tonight and perform the way you did against Huntsville and expect to uh, be successful because there is no success in, in uh, oh, mulling over the uh, last week's uh, win. And, uh, man, well, the, the elements and the hangover it did seem like that uh, Decatur was uh, experiencing a hangover game last week. It, did, it really did. And, and you know, I, I don't think that uh, – 
you know, at, at this particular point in, in where we are, where we are, I'm looking for any kind of advantage. And, you know, if it gives us an advantage of, of boy, we really stunk it up, we can't do that next. We got to be more prepared against Clay Chavo than, than it was worth the spanking that we got. But hopefully we learn from that and, and put it to practice tonight. Well, you know, we've got <clears> – <throat> We know that the clay coaches have been drilling their guys all week long that this Decatur team's better better than their record appears. And um, I, and I think we've got to play with a spirit of we've got nothing to lose tonight. You know, these guys uh, are the number one team in 6A, and um, we, we got to hope that they come out playing a little tight. Uh, Coach Chadcock did say they'll be prepared, but you never know how they react when they get on the field. And our guys, I mean, watch them in – pregame they're coming out here with some confidence i mean we didn't like we said the huntsville game we we fell behind we we stalled a lot and um but uh looking before that we closed the year very well and uh the big win at at athens it sprung us into this game tonight um i can't say our guys were looking ahead but maybe they were looking ahead and this is a big game big big game for our program to get back in the playoffs and man i'm excited we put together two halves like we did the second half against Athens, and we can we could kind of, we could have some success tonight. But you got to come out with that mindset. Yeah, and I think that was just you know limiting your mistakes, and, and we just we haven't had a lot of that this year. And so, you know, I, I think there's some unknowns. Uh, I think if you look at the tape on Decatur, you're going to say, well, you know, at some point or another, they 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 have the um, what do you call it? It's the propensity to, to shoot themselves in the foot. And, and against Athens in the second half, we didn't, which was the longest extended part that we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot. And, you know, and, and let's, let's be honest, it's Clay Chopper was going to have to have their, not their A plus game, but their, maybe their B game. And Decatur's going to have to have their A plus plus game, and, which they can. We haven't seen it yet. We've maybe seen a little bit against Athens. In the second, uh, in the second half, but uh, that's what it's going to take. And like my, like Max asked me all the time, we're going to win. We're going to win. Well, you know, we got a chance because we're playing. So let's go. Well, three years ago, when we were Jackson Olean, did you think we had a chance? No. Well, no. Yeah, I mean, I thought. Well, maybe. I think maybe. I like the term puncher, puncher's chance. But I tell you one one of the things in the uh, in the Jackson Olin game, and I can't remember what it was, but there was something. I think as the bus pulled up, Nick, you might know this, but I think there was some jawing or something going on with some Jackson Olin. Oh, there was, yes. Uh-huh. And and, uh, and Duper got mad. Duper came onto the field mad. And you know, when you mad, it's like I don't care who you are. They were basically saying that we had no business being there. Yeah, because we were, we were from Decatur, Georgia. <laughs> it's still a funny story. <laughs> but, yeah, we got to get mad tonight. I mean, I hope, hopefully we're mad right now. Just, you know. Let me give you a little bit of insight to the history in this ball in this series between Clay Chalkville and Decatur. This is the fifth matchup overall. Uh, Clay Chalkville does hold the um, – Edge over Decatur. The uh, they have Decatur has only won one game against Clay Chalkville. Uh, the we have a one and three record against Clay Chalkville. Last time we met uh, was in 2014, and uh, does that seem like it's been seven years ago, John? Yes, it does seem like it's seven years ago. And it was a loss, uh, 38 to 10 that night. So uh, this is the fifth meeting between the two schools. So. Looking for a good outcome tonight. Come out here and play our best and uh, um, let, let the chips fall you know, where they may. 15 minutes remaining on the play clock. We, we, play clock, we are in the pregame right now. Neither team is on the field. Uh, currently, we have the um, Clay Chalkville band. They have made their way into the stands. I look across the field to where our stands are. We have a – the Decatur band has made their way from – uh, Decatur, and they are up in the stands, and a few of the uh, Decatur folks are filtering in uh, as uh, we draw closer to game time. Well, uh, since this is the playoffs, uh, we are are required to do some PSAs, public service announcements, and I will take the first one. Go ahead. I think each one of us will have one. The AHSAA reminds fans 
that while we all play a role in protecting ourselves and others from COVID-19, while enjoying high school for sports, please remember to follow state and local guidelines. Stay six feet. Would y'all please move out six feet, please? I'm sorry. Stay, I'm sorry. Stay six feet apart from others when you can. Oh, we can. Wear face coverings when you can't and wash your hands frequently. These small actions will make a big difference. Do your part. Stay apart. Well done. Thank you, John. I do Quit appreciate touching up on me, man. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to rub it up on I do on appreciate me. our 13 listeners right now and uh I know we, I hope they all have their mask. On. Yeah. I hope they learned something with that and uh got to give a shout out to Joel Lamp. He's he's uh uh, old classmate from the class of 96 and he has moved recently moved back in town actually going to be uh taking over uh, a position with the huntsville uh visitors and bureau but he's he's with west steven tonight on his back porch so we can count on them listen to us tonight so. hey guess what brent they are not watching baseball you know why because you naysayers didn't think they were going to win the yeah Braves the, Braves. the we, world series we got to give a yeah. shout out to the Braves. how about that oh. Yeah, done. Nah, the Braves. The you know, Braves. I got to thinking if they, you know, I saw where the plane came flying back and they they got off the plane. You know, that plane probably flew over our house. Yeah, it you came you, from out the west coast. What five years ago? You showed me that app. You have you yeah. still follow the navigation yeah, tracks? Yeah, of, yeah. Uh, planes fly. I, I mean, got that. I got that app. You got that app. We're, we're on the flight fly approach to Atlanta for people from San Francisco, from Los Angeles, from. Denver. Memphis. Yeah, Memphis is every once in a while. We're going to be jamming tonight, guys. Who is this? Is this Michael Johnson? <laughs> hey, we do have 50 yard line seats, and you got to give a shout out to all our uh, dedicator high school families and uh, fans that have well, while we're and, doing this. and the band. And you it sounds like we have another public service announcement. Hang on, guys. Okay, so I get, I'm get putting tick marks here so we can keep up with how many we've read. All right, so I get number two. Okay, here we go. In Alabama, high school sport is a tradition. Whether at home or on the road, make our schools, our communities, and our students proud by being a supportive fan. Help us by helping you. Follow the safety guidelines of the Alabama Department of Public Health. Don't congregate within six feet of a person from another household and wear a face mask when visiting the concession stands or restrooms, and when entering and exiting the gates. We are counting on you to continue our high school traditions. Is that like the back gate of your, your house? Yeah, whenever you go in and out the back gate, when you're taking the garbage out, wear a face mask. All right. Hey, I tell you, talking about being positive and sportsmanship, I will have to uh, say that Clay Chalkville rolled out the red carpet for us today. Uh, they they roped off a section on the 50 yard line on their side of the field. Their uh, their coaches came in and gave us a lot of good information, and uh, we're not used to that hospitality, but it is appreciated. Well, in Athens, you know, they had a meal for us, but I do appreciate everything that they did for us here. You know, it was nice. Speaking to- of meals, oh oh, th- Nick. Who, Nick, wants to, who wants to talk about the meal? Well, well Nick and I, I'll start, but uh, Nick had in mind that he knew where we were going, and, and I had in my mind I knew where we were going, and it ended up being the same place. Uh, well, I walked into John's house today having no idea what the plan was, and he asked me where we were going to eat, and I was like, well, that's up to y'all. I was going to let y'all handle that one. Well, it sounded like John had John, a plan, and we, we bucked that I think plan. we ruined his plan for him. <laughs> what was the name of the Mexican restaurant? Do you remember? I don't know. Mi Hacienda. <laughs> Las Vias. I don't know. Camino Real. But we didn't eat there. We ate at Nicky's West. West. How you doing, Decatur? And uh, food connoisseurs anywhere will know Nicky's West. It's a good, nice meet and three. Maybe the first kind of a Piccadilly Morrison style, right? On, a, on steroids. Well, to me, it tastes a whole lot better. It doesn't all, sometimes Morrison's and places like that can all taste the same. And I, man, I, I, I could have an IV of Greek chicken. Uh, that sauce that they put on top of it, that's some good stuff right there. I think the median age of their, of everybody in there was about 75. And they listened to the public service announcement because they all had masks on. So. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> a little bit of a healthy yes, I did. Here. Would like to, oh my, what was that? Okay, we've got things falling off the press box here. They said you couldn't get on the roof, and that came from the roof. So. I'm right. good. I'm good right here. I get to sit down. All right, well, there's eight minutes and 50 seconds remaining on the clock. We still do not have any players out on the field. Another PSA coming up. And we are now going to have, and I have your attention, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Win or lose, the name of the game is sportsmanship in an education based high school athletics. The lessons learned on the court and in the bleachers as good sports are winners no matter what the score. Support high school athletics with good sportsmanship. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Did, right. he, did, he, did the state say how many times we had to read these? Is it just once, or do we have to read them all throughout? I don't know. I'll find out. Okay. Well, this is all new for us. Well, so. well we got a, a little bit of time before the game. Why don't you I, go ahead and hit those seniors? Yeah, let's talk about our seniors uh, going out this year. Um, you know, and you got to – it's a testament these guys took it out through all the years. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. So um, the seniors, number 96, Gavin Barbie, number 66, Ward Bouchelon, 72, Hunter Claiborne, 24, Cage Davidson, 13, Banks Dement, 77, Jaden Freeman. We got a senior trainer, Saria Hamlin, number 75, Ashton Lowry, 50, number 56, Jacob McRae, number 70, Foster Nelson. Number eight, Owen Poovy. We got a senior trainer, Esmeraldo Salgado. Number 37, Kendall Scott. Number 10, Jack Sturgis. Number 90, Braxton Thomas. Number 18, Jamari Washington. Number six, Keandre Williams. Number 16, Keandre Williams. Number 17, Charlie Selusky. And I think that rounds it out. But, uh, you know, these each of these guys have their own unique way of, of impacting this team. Some you know, uh, you, you hear their name a lot on the on on making plays, but some are on the sidelines rooting their team on. But you know, you've talked a lot about it, John, with your son Max. I mean, you know, what does it mean to be a teammate, and what these guys and learning life lessons with just being a teammate and sticking it out and going through adversity. That's what you. That's what you want to come in with these guys. And these guys, and they hold a special place in my heart. They. Uh, uh, they were on the last uh, eighth grade, you know, winning team that we had at Oak Park and uh, Decatur Middle School. Uh, we went six and two with these seniors, uh, and they were just a great bunch to coach. A few of them have moved on to other schools. There's some that uh, have uh, transferred to other places, but this core group, uh, they were they were a great bunch of kids, and they were very coachable and. Uh, um, every time I, I see them, they, they're still, hey, coach. Well, you know, I, one of the things about you know, at the at the barge party the other night, Coach Adcock talked about the, these these this group of seniors is one of the one of his most favorite classes, and you know, he talked about it's not wins and losses, it's it's, it's character and, and what you put into it, and how much he loves you, and you love them, and they they love Decatur High School, and. Uh, that's just a testament to those guys. And as they line up, Nick, you got the. I do. Number 72, Hunter Claiborne. Number 13, Banks DeMint. Number 18, Jamari Washington. And number 56, Jacob McRae are the seniors that are going to be representing Decatur right, tonight. The, time, the captains the for uh, Clay Chalkford yeah, will be number 30. That will be Jordan here. Walker. And number 26, D'Angelo Barber. We are now standing for the national anthem, anthem in moment of silence. Thank you. 
Special recognition to play. And that was the national anthem brought to you by the Clay Chalkville Marching Band. Seniors are now making their way out to midfield along with the officials. And we will spy from the 50 yard line perch in front of the press box and see if we can see what the coin toss will be. Senior, let's see, the uh, captains are shaking hands. Decatur High School is making their way across the large expanse as they make their way out onto the field. Clay Chalkville team is coming out of their field house as well. So both teams are making their entrance. There's the coin toss. Linebacker DJ Barber. And linebacker number 30. Looks like Clay Chalkville has won the toss and they have deferred to the second half. The referee is now talking to the Decatur captain, Jacob McCray. For the first half, Decatur is going to receive and defend. Oh, guys, I forgot to look. I'm going to assume that is the south end zone. I don't no, think we're north to south. No, that's a west end zone. Okay, west end zone, and uh, the Cougars will defend the east end zone. So Decatur will be wearing their traditional red helmets with the Decatur D on the side, black stripe down the middle, and it will be surrounded also on both sides by two white stripes. Decatur tonight is wearing their white jerseys with black numerals, white pants, and white socks. The Clay Chalkville Cougars are wearing silver helmets with two C's embossed on the sides, representing Clay Chalkville. Uh, they are wearing blue jerseys, I guess I should say navy, with silver stripe or silver numerals outlined in white, and they are wearing gray pants as well. Both teams are making their way out onto the field now. And we are quickly moving in towards kickoff. Hats off to the media relation uh, group with Play Chalkball. You see the drone overhead. You got guys on top of their field house. I think, is that what that is, a drone? Either that or Santa Claus with a cord. <laughs> I didn't know drones had a cord, but I guess that gives a live feed back to their um, – the, the radio broadcast or something. I don't know. That's very interesting, but I would not want to be one of the people on top of that building up there. I bet they're not getting knocked down like we are with this, uh, the booth behind us. So knock down the wind. All right. So both teams may have made their way out onto the field. The officials are now standing at the 50 yard line where they're going to congregate. They're going to shake hands and they're going to say, don't mess up as they run to their respective positions as we get ready for kickoff. You know, one of the things, if you've ever been down here in this part of, of I don't know, we're in Jefferson County, maybe? I don't know. North, north of Birmingham. It's, it's those little ribbons of, of mountains that separate, like, Clay Chauvel to Pinson Valley, just right over the, the, the hill, the mountain. And uh, it gets a little nippy down in these valleys, and that's kind of where we are tonight. And uh, I imagine that it's going to be uh, – a little moist, a little wet, and a little cold. Perfect, perfect weather. Well, this allows us to get the fast start. We get the ball first, so let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, make it happen. Well, we have a little bit of a delay right now because we've got a group that is standing off to our left down here. And one of the officials had to run down and ask them Number something. 32, Matthew, and Matthew. now the official is running all the way back across the field to tell the other officials whatever information he just received. So, all right. So he must have been giving out lottery ticket numbers or something because all the officials know now and they have separated and they are now 
going to their respective positions on the field. I don't think uh, kickoff is one of their major fortes, so this this could be interesting to see where it goes. Back deep for Decatur is Jaden Brown and number 22, uh, McDaniel. All right, and the kick is away, end over end kick. It's going to be brought in at the 22 by Jaden McDaniel at the 20 yard line. Makes his way up to the 25, where he's going to be grabbed there and pushed back. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders, close to the 26, 27 yard line. Jiren was fortunate to catch that on the bounce, but even at that, he didn't have a chance to really get a lot of momentum before he started having. Uh, contact with the Clay Chalkful guy. So well it was short. It was a little spinner and, and Ryan Kirk looked like he was going back and he was he was ready to catch it but uh, a little hesitant and let it uh, bounce and didn't get much uh, return yard. Clay Chalkful plays a very interesting defense. They play a 40 defense but their two uh their two ends will stand up most of the time. Their two interior linemen will get down a stance, showing no pressure right now. Ellis takes the snap, throws the ball to Jaden Brown, makes the catch at the 20 or at the 31-yard line. 30, I'm sorry, 36-yard line. Tries to push across the 40. Giving the 41, it's going to be a first down. Good play for the Decatur Red Raider. Not a great pass by Ellis, but uh, J- Jaden did a good job of getting his arms up and catching the pass yeah, and to reach for the first him. down. Yeah, they reached behind him to get it, and uh, nice job of Concentration. Decatur moving left to right as you listen. Ellis calling for the snap. Nope. He's going to fake the snap. Going to look to the sideline. Get his call. Two receivers far side. Single receiver near side. And Jack Sturges. He's got one running back. And uh, Kirk standing next to him on his left. He's going to hand off to Ryan. Ryan's got a hole up the middle. Up past the 40 to the 45. Close to the 50-yard line. Good run by Ryan Kirk. Close to a first down. Running straight at him right there, right up the middle. And, uh, again, for 10 yards, that's two first downs. We, we talked about getting out to a fast start. We're at the 50-yard line. Let's take it on in. I really don't think that they gave him his rollover. He rolled over a Clay Chalkville defender, but and they marked him down to two yards behind it. The ball spotted at Decatur's own 49-yard line. Call it second down and two. 10-40 remaining in the ball game. No score so far. Ellis is changing something at the line. He's going to have uh, Ryan Kirk standing behind him now. It's going to take the snap. It's going to hand off to Ryan. Ryan's going to sidestep to the left, get up to the line of scrimmage, give him a yard possibly. It's going to bring up third down. Yeah, it's going to be third and one. And uh, I didn't think he was going to get much of anything. And uh, he sidestepped a couple of defenders and uh, was able to slide forward. It's going to be third down and one. Looks like the Raider package is, uh, has come back in and see if we can get this uh, – this yard for the first down. Ball is spotted directly on the 50-yard line. Third down and one. Ryan Kirk in the backfield behind Ellis. Three receivers to the uh, near side. Ellis looking over the scene, ready for the snap. Gives the ball to Ryan. Ryan's pushing forward. It's going to be close to first down yardage uh, by this official right here. Down. I believe he will get the first down. Yep, the officials are saying first down, and the white hat says first down, Decatur Red Raiders. It'll be first down for Decatur on the 49-yard line off Clay Chocolate. Not by much, but uh, we'll, we'll take it. Running it right at them right now. So you kind of uh, do away with some of the speed when you run right at them. When you start running sideways, you start letting their speed start playing in. Clay Chocolate is going to put three men right tight inside the Decatur interior. Uh, playing in a 30 now with uh, three linebackers behind them. Ellis is going to make a change. He's going to have two receivers near side, single receiver far side. He's going to take the snap, and it's going to be a penalty play. No play here. The ball was snapped, but we have a penalty. It can't be a delay of game because they got the snap off at, at one second, so I don't know if there was movement or what. Looking at the official, waiting for a play. It looks like it's going to be a Clay Chalkful. Offsides against the Cougars. March the ball five yards. Ball's going to be spotted at the Cougars' 44-yard line. First down for Decatur. Ellis threw that ball sidearmed. I'm thinking it was that sidearm underneath release by and uh, hit Jack Waller, but uh, we take the five yards first and five. All right, single receiver far side, two receivers near side. We got our H to Ellis's right. Going to hand off once again to, oh, who was that, Jackson or Jackson Thatch? That, no, Josh Turner got the ball, and it's going to be, he's going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage on the play. No, it's actually going to be a loss of three on the play. It's going to bring up second long. 
they got right through our offensive line there and uh, met met him right under the chin, Josh Turner. Their sticks are kind of messing me up over there. Have y'all noticed that? Oh, well, it's first and five, so now it's second and seven. Okay. That is correct. Okay. I'm glad you told me that. I couldn't understand. I forgot <laughs> I forgot about the penalty. Yeah. All right. Ellis has uh, he's got two running backs, but it's going to be almost intercepted. Took the snap, and he looked to the left and tried to slide one into Drayden Brown. Almost picked off, and if it would have been, it had been a touchdown for Clay Chalk. Well, not only that, but uh, Jaden Brown had a chance to catch it, and it kind of bobbled around in his arms and uh, fell to the ground. Now it's third down. This is not what we want. It's third and long, and uh, a passing situation for Decatur. Uh, the ball spotted at Clay Chalk Fool's 46-yard line. Single receiver near side, two receivers far side. Ellis is going to put Ryan Kirk to his left. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Pressure off the left side, knocked down. It's going to be an incomplete pl- pass. Ball was knocked to the ground by one of the defenders of Clay Chalkful. It's going to bring up fourth down and, oh, a good seven yards. Yeah, number 19 came around right in on a blitz, and uh, he jumped up and got his hands, his mid on the, on the ball and knocked it down for a deflection. All right, Owen Poovey in for the kick. Decatur's going to be lined up in a tight punt formation. Banks turns around, looks at Owen. Owen says, yep, I'm ready. Bad snap, low, picks it up, kick us away. Good job by Owen Poovey. It's going to go all the way down to the 16-yard line, breaks a tackle, out to the 20, up to the 30, 35-yard line, where he's drug out of bounds by Jackson Thatch. It's going to be first down and 10 for Jackson Owen around their own 35-yard line. We had a, a good shot, initial contact, and we it was an arm tackle, and he got through it. But, hey, you got to give a lot of props for Owen uh, coming up with that ball. Um, skipped to him, didn't it? Skipped to him, and uh, great spiral kick after that. So, Yeah, but still, though, you got to it, – it, once we missed the tackle, they gained about 20 yards. So, got to be uh, – we got to take advantage of when we get, get them, get them down on the ground. Now it's time for the Clay Chalkful high-power offense. Johnson, number two, their quarterback in, is going to send in motion across the formation, going to spin him back around. He's going to fake the handoff to his running back. He's going to throw an out to the fly. So, yeah. It's going to be a touchdown for Clay Chalkful. Pass out to number three. Uh, oh, they call him White. oh, my God. And <laughs> when he caught the ball, he oh. turned on the afterburners, and he wasn't even touched by a Decatur Red Raider. Oh, my goodness. Long touchdown for Clay Chalk. Just a swing pass out of the backfield. I this mean. kid they call Squirrel, he's committed to Tennessee. Uh, he's, he's a pretty good player right there. Oh, my gosh. All right, Clay Chalkful comes home for it. They do not kick. They are they are not real happy with their kicking game. They go for two every time. Johnson in at quarterback. He's going to throw a pass out to the right. Sidestep. It's going to be in for the two-point conversion. The pass was completed to number four, Mario Craver. So, with 7.48 remaining in your first quarter, Clay Chalkful leads by a score of eight to nothing. Trey Ayers had him at the one yard line and he juked him out and stepped right in the end zone. But wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that that was very athletic. The, the, oh my goodness. the swing pass, I, I don't know that we even touched him. Oh, we no. didn't touch him. Mm-mm. No, and he was gone. It he, was like just, man, that was impressive. He was he was one of those runners that I have Mentioned what was before. his number? I didn't. I couldn't even see number, his number. three. Marcarius <laughs> White, Marcarius White, senior wide receiver. He Marcarius is down to the touchdown. <laughs> committed to a touchdown. At the University of Tennessee. I don't know well, if Alabama and Auburn are here tonight. They may try to swing them, swing them their way. Wow. Okay. It was impressive. Let's start over again, guys. All right. Here's the kick, end over end. It's going to come down, a little bit better kick this time, down to the 15. McDaniel takes it in there. He's out past the 20. It's going to be grabbed there, thrown down to the artificial turf where Decatur will take over. First down and 10. Okay, we're going to – I guess we come back out do the same thing we did. We First series, we what, had three three first downs in a row and uh, until it finally stalls. And uh, we're going to have to do the same thing. Don't panic. Let's go out there and uh, and try to move the football. That guy didn't run. I don't know if that guy's feet touched the ground as he scored. Mm. I mean, it was it was like zip. He was gone. 
All right, Decatur takes the field. Ellis is going to have, looks like he's going to have Keandre standing behind him. One receiver near side, single receiver on the far side. It's going to give the ball to Keandre. Keandre is going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, he may no squeeze. He, no, he's not going to even squeeze a yard out of that, bringing yeah, up second out of 10. This team is extremely fast all over, and defensive line extremely fast too. And that that way, uh, you know, we're going to have to mix it up. We're going to have to get them going one way, bring it back the other way. Yeah, I know going right at them is one thing, but uh, that's going to be tough after a while. We have a whistle and timeout. we have a timeout, Decatur. So, with 7 11 remaining in the first quarter, your score, Jack, or Jackson Olin, your score, Clay Chalkville, That's, eight. Yeah, you said Jackson Olin a couple times. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, do I get a Clay so Chalkville? For another public service annou- announcement. Okay, here is time for a, another public service announcement. The AHSAA reminds fans that we all play a role in the education of our students. Parents, fans, and the people in the community all set an example for students, whether they are aware of it or not. Help set a positive example in everything you do, both at the games and in your community. Good sportsmanship is what sets your school apart. All right. Thank you. Let me put a tick mark on here that we read the next one. All right. Looks like Decatur is going to move. It's going to be another penalty. It's going to be another penalty here. The Jacks, or I keep saying Jacks, the Clay Chalkville players are jumping up and down, pointing at Decatur. So it's going to be an illegal procedure against Decatur, backing them up five yards, bringing up a second down and 15. Well, the, the defensive line is jumping around in that time. Pulled a couple of guys on the offensive line, make it, making them move, gets us the penalty. All right. Single receiver near side, two receivers far side. Ellis looking over the Clay Chalkful defense. It's going to hand off to Keandre. Keandre gets a little bit of stepping room, but is immediately swarmed upon by the Clay Chalkful defense. He may have picked up a step or two. It's going to bring up third down and long. Keandre got through the first level there, but their defensive back who came in or linebacker came in and just popped him. He was uh, very aggressive on that hit. All right. Third down play for Decatur. Ellis calling for the snap. Nobody moves. Moves a couple of Decatur Red Raiders around. There's your snap, looking to throw the ball. Instant pressure off his left side. Gets rid of the ball. Throws the ball, the ball out to Jack Waller. Close to first down. Oh, did he not get it? He may have stepped out of bounds. Yeah, he's going to be short of the first down. Let's call it uh, fourth down and and one. I don't know. Maybe we go go for it. it. You got to go for it. Ellis did a great job stepping up in the pocket right there and picking up his receiver, Jack Waller. We're punting. No, we're going to punt. All right, so it's going to be a fourth down and one play, and Coach Adcock is going to send in the uh, the punt team. This time we're going to spread them out. It's going to be a spread punt formation. Maybe we try to get them offside. Good snap. Kick is away, and we have a penalty play, and it is blown dead. Oh, we were in motion. Illegal, motion. Illegal procedure against Decatur. So back Decatur up five yards. We had somebody moving, and they didn't. Poovy or whoever called for the snap didn't didn't get set. Still a spread punt formation for Decatur. Ball is set at the 28-yard line. Good snap. Pressure zone. Kick is away. High spiraling kick. Going to come down around the 35-yard line line where there is a fair catch. And Jackson Olin will take over there. Number four, Mario. I wish we were playing Jackson Olin. I tell you what. I don't know what's wrong. Clay Chalkville. Mm, Clay Chalkville. Well, All right. I, I don't know that you can defend that. I mean, I, I you could prepare for that, but as fast as he got through our line. Oh, you talking about the, la- the yeah. touchdown play? Yeah. I mean, I, I hope there's not a rinse and repeat here. So, Nope, absolutely. All right. Clay Chalkville in. It's going to be Johnson at quarterback, has a tight formation. Everybody's in tight, and it's going to be just a little quick pitch to the left. Number 22 for Jackson Owens going to carry the ball, pick up a little bit of yard, yardage. Edward Osley 
probably going to pick up about three yards on the play, bringing up second down. They just had a good push around left end, and uh, our guys didn't get any penetration, so uh, we pushed them out after a four-yard gain. Well, Zaleski did a nice job of trying to get to the outside, keep his outside arm free, but they did get three yards. Clay Chalkful, quarterback Johnson, ready for the snap. Has two receivers far side, two receivers near side. Single running back standing to his right. It's going to play fake. It's going to throw across the middle. It's going to be brought in off the ground, and it's going to be number four once again. That'll be Mario Craver. He's going to score a touchdown once again. I, I, I almost saw that ball hit the, the ground. ground yeah. uh, he, 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 he picked it up right before it hit the ground. I mean, you talk about an athletic move just to get down in a full sprint to, uh, to pick the ball up right off the turf and uh, – that was a sophomore, number four, Mario Craver. Craver. Yeah, just the very act of him catching that ball made my back hurt. And I thought there was no way that he made that catch. But anyway, Johnson sends his running back out to the right where they've got a quad formation, single receiver near side. It's going to be a throw out there to number 22. He's going to be knocked down short of the goal line. Edward Osley does not pick up the two-point conversion for Clay Chalkful, but your new score with 550 remaining in the ball game is Clay Chalkful 14, Decatur 0. Good job by Josh Turner and Jiren McDaniel busting through the line right there and uh, tripping them up to keep them out of the end zone for the two-point conversion. Well, you, you, I don't know how you stop that play. That's just an athletic play. Not only does he pick it up off the ground, He's able to stop and tiptoe along the sidelines, pick up his block, and then cut back toward the middle of the field. And, you know, once he got his, established his balance to where he didn't go out of bounds, you kind of thought, I think everybody in the stadium, at least on this side of the stadium with the Clay Chauvel people, thought, oh, that's it, he's gone. Well, I you, mean, he did walk a tight rope for about 30 yards right down the sideline, wanting him to go out of bounds, but he never did. Clay Chauvel getting ready to kick the ball. Their kicker is number 32. That would be Matthew Vasquez. Kick is away. It's going to come down to McDaniel around the 14-yard line, across the 20, makes a move at the 25, gets it up to the 30, where he's going to be pulled out of bounds around the 33-yard line. First down and 10 for Decatur there. Good good return by uh, McDaniel. But you know, the thing about it is the speed works both ways. And uh, Jiren, who, who's pretty fast on our side, he just looked like he, he was going to break out in the open. And next thing you know, two or three uh, Cougars are right there with him. So that speed works on defense just as much as it does on offense. What could have been a really big return, we get it up to the 33-yard line. Ellis leading Decatur back onto the field. He's got two running backs, Banks DeMint standing to his left, and Ryan Kirk standing behind him. Two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Hand off to Ryan Kirk, puts his hands on Banks' back, pushing him along. He's going to pick up positive yards on the play, give him a gain of three. It's going to be second down and about seven or eight. Good job by Ryan Kirk there following his block. Uh, just caved in on him real quick there. Well, it looked like he made more yards than he did. He, he kept pushing him to the outside, but it is good positive yardage on first down, which is uh, something we need. 5-13 remaining in the first quarter. Decatur, two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Ellis, screaming instructions to his lineman. No pressure. Hands off to his running back, Ryan Kirk, who's hitting the backfield. He's going to lose a yard, maybe two on the play, bringing up third down and long. Well, the problem, one of the problems right there is Ashton Lowry was on his rear end, and uh, he just got – whoever was in front of him blew up the whole play because he got pushed backwards. And uh, that time, uh, Ryan Kirk really didn't have anywhere to go, so it's third down and long, and we need to make a conversion here, help the defense. Clay Chalkful. Showing a two-man front still, 40, with the two standing ends. Not showing pressure right now. Two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Penalty on the play. Was that one of our receivers that jumped maybe early? Offside against Clay Chalkville. Give us five yards. Well, there we go. Now it's third down and not so long, John. 
That's good. Third, third, down down third down and three. Yeah. yeah. Third down and three. For well, you know, uh, like I said, they do a lot of jumping around, and I think sometimes they jump forward <laughs> and break the plane, and that's evidently what they must have done on the defensive front. Ball is spotted at Decatur's own 41-yard line in the middle of the field. Still got Jack Waller and looks like – Jaira McDaniel split out over here to this side. Handoff is to Josh Turner trying to pick up yardage for first down, and he's going to come up short. It's going to bring up fourth down and about two yards. Got to go for it, guys. I mean, yeah, they're going to, they're going to I don't think score. you run up there if you don't go for it on fourth down, so that was probably by design. And it's good that, you know, they're trying to mix it up. you got to against a defense like this. So. Well, we're not getting any movement. We're not pushing those guys anywhere. Ball is still spotted at the 41. Call it a fourth and two. Still two receivers near side. Single receiver and Jaden Brown on the far side. And we've got a penalty play. Mr. Official is counting, and I don't know if he's counting Red Raiders. I don't know if he's counting Clay Chalkful. One, two, three. In your playoff update. Southside, 14 to nothing. Looks like Decatur has an extra player on uh-huh. the field. No, they Is don't. That... Looks yep. like Jack Waller just left. Illegal so. pers- participation. So against Decatur. Now that's going to back it up five. And, you know, coach is not very happy with Jack over there on the sideline. So it's going to bring up fourth down and eight. Uh, seven yards. The ball's now spotted at the 36 yard line. Decatur spread punt formation. Owen back deep. Good snap. Kick is away. End over end kick. Nope. It's going to be fumbled. And Decatur was right there next to it. Not sure if we were able to jump on it. No, we were not. Jackson Thatch was right there on it. Clay Chalkful. Play chalkful player number four, Mario Craver, fumbled, muffed the snap or muffed the uh, punt. Ball fell harmlessly because they ate, got right back on it. So, oh, tough break for Decatur there. Well, that was a break that we needed to get back on that ball. But it's going to be first down of ten for Clay Chalkful. The ball is spotted at the 34-yard line. 2:54 remaining in the first quarter. Johnson in a quarterback, two receivers near sides in the pistol formation, running back standing behind him, takes the snap. It's going to hand off to number 22 for uh, Clay Chalkville. That would be Os- Osley. He's going to pick up about five, six yards on the play, bringing up second down. Yeah, he just crashed in the middle, knocked a couple of Raiders backwards, and uh, <laughs> nice, nice run. Picks up five yards on first down. Ball spotted at the 38-yard line. Clay Chalkville's own 38-yard line. Johnson calling for the snap. Going to hand off to Osley once again. Stacked up in the middle by the Red Raiders, but pushing forward. Not quite the first down yardage. Probably going to make the 43-yard line where it's going to bring up a third down and short. You know, it looked like Myron Miller was had picked the hole that the, the runner ran at but he, he ran right past him. I don't know what happened there. Four down and one for Clay Chalkville. Johnson, looking over his troops, sees two receivers, one on either side. He's going to hand off to Osley once again. Myron Miller grabs a hold of him, and he's drug forward about three yards. First down play for Clay Chalkwell. Yeah, it almost seems like Clay Chalkwell says, "Look, we're gonna, you know, let's let's go out there and run the ball, see if we can can score them." But uh, they, they kind of called off the pass route. Well, it looks like they might be in a pass formation this this particular day. Number two, Johnson for Clay Chalkwell, looking to the sideline, getting his play. He's got three receivers to the far side. This is. Formation that they like to run that little swing pass out of. Nope, he's going to put his near receiver in motion, bring him into a wing. He's going to take the ball, drift back, throw deep, wide open receiver. Wow. Uh, Touchdown for Clay Chalkville, and there wasn't a Decatur defensive back within 20 yards of him. Z.J. Matthews was the closest Decatur Red Raider to him, and he he was 15, 20 yards behind the play. 
that that was identical identical to what we saw in warmups. I mean, it was, yeah, that's right. Just identical. like just like Hit him in stride. That was perfect ball and a deep and twenty yards behind everybody else. And Clay Chalkville getting into a huddle. They're going to once again send their quad package out to the right. Four receivers to the right of Johnson. Single receiver over to the near side. Wonder if he's going to run a quarterback draw. There he goes, right up to the left side, in for, to the end zone for the two point conversion. So, with one minute remaining yeah, in the good. first quarter, your score, uh, Clay Chalkville 22 and Decatur zero. Well, we, we, we can see how they got, uh, they score so many points and they don't give up a lot of points. Good on offense, good on defense, kicking game. Who needs it? Who needs it when you're this good on offense and defense? They made it. They may need it in the in the uh, semifinals and finals. They don't need it tonight. Uh, I, I was warned by some of my friends that live in the Deca- or live in Birmingham area that uh, Clay Chalkful was the real deal and and unstoppable. And that's what they've shown us so far. Well, you know, it just seems like they've got. It's not just one guy with tremendous speed. It's uh, every one of them, and. Uh, you know, it looks like they're having fun, and, and you know they they got business to do, and they're going out and taking care of business. And Decatur just doesn't look like that, that we have a lot of confidence right now. But it's just, hey, let's go out and play. There's a minute left in the quarter, and let's see what we can do. Vasquez strolls up to the ball, kicks it, and it's going to go into the end zone, where it will be brought out to the twenty yard line. First down for Decatur. You know, Jaron McDaniel's fortunate; he let that one drop behind him. That, very easily could have kicked back the other I'm way. I'm not so, so sure it didn't hit him. It he, was, he was looking at it like it hit him, but it goes into the end zone or out of the back of the end zone. So. Ball spotted midfield, 20-yard line. Decatur's offense making their way out onto the field. Looking like a good crowd over there from Decatur. Good crowd from I Decatur. I think my daughter Absolutely. Abby just got here, so I've been tracking her on Live 360. Right. and uh, <laughs> So... <laughs> All right, two receivers far side, single receiver near side for Decatur. Ellis takes the snap. He's going to hand off up the middle. Picking up pretty good yardage will be Josh Turner, I do believe. I didn't catch that number. No, it's DeAndre. And he's going to pick up about four yards on the play, bring up second down. I mean, you got to run like he did that time. He ran with purpose. He hit the hole hard, and that that's the only way we're going to make any yards against these guys. We're not going to. We, yeah. we need to work on the snap a little bit, a little bit high. And yeah. Ellis, if Ellis could keep the, keep the ball down. But, yeah, he's got to hit the hole. Sturges and Waller lined up near side. Single receiver on the far side and Jaden Brown. Ellis ready for the snap. He's got Keandre behind him. Hands off to Keandre. Keandre sidesteps one uh, Clay Chalkful defender, but he will not sidestep the second one. It's going to be a loss on the play, bringing up third down. I don't think that defender was touched by our offensive line. I believe there were two untouched Clay Chalkful players in our backfield. Keandre was able to sidestep one, but not the other. So Where these boys got to find some grit, like Coach Hackock was talking about in the beginning of the game. I mean, uh, we are undersized, and uh, they appear to be the more athletic team. But we gotta we gotta show some grit to get back in this game if we have any chance. First quarter comes to an end. Your score is Clay Chawful twenty-two, Decatur zero. You want to do another PSA real quick? Yeah, I got this. I don't know if this is the right one. In Alabama, you should be reading the fifth one. Good sportsmanship is a high school tradition, whether at home or on the road. Make our schools, our communities, our students proud by displaying positive sportsmanship. Thank you, John Godwin. Those are words to live by. Well, is that it for the PSAs? No, I think we got another one. We got another one? Okay. Ball switching ends. The officials have spotted the ball down at the 22-yard line, Decatur's own 22-yard line. We're going to be third down and eight. This, this, This reminds me of a college team where each position is fast, is physical, and is very skilled. And, you know, and it, look out on that defense of, of Clay Chauvel, and you just see all those guys look like they could be playing in the uh, on Saturdays. And it sounds like half of them will be. 
Decatur comes out onto the field. Ellis is going to have Ryan Kirk standing to his left. We're ready for play. There's the snap. Looking to throw the ball to his right. It's going to be way overthrown, thrown way over Jaron McDaniel's head. It's going to bring up a fourth down for Decatur. Ellis didn't have didn't think he had quite the time to let that play develop, and he got the, the ball a little bit out in front of Jaron. He couldn't make up the difference. Decatur running their – kicking their punt team out onto the field. This time it will be a tight punt formation. Banks to Mint, personal protector, turn around looking at Owen. Owen gives him the nod. There's the snap. Kick is away. Kick is going to come down around the 43. Fair catch called for where Clay Chalkful will take over on their own 43-yard line with 11.47 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, it was a wobbly kick. It didn't, it didn't get to really turn over and not as good a punt, I'm sure, as Poovy would like, but did force a fair catch. I, I'm sure that uh, – that the, the guy who caught it is, is kicking himself because he had plenty of room, yeah, room he, to run. We were very fortunate for him to call that fair catch because he had, he had plenty of room. Jackson Olin. Jackson Olin. Clay Chawful running. Now, I'm catching myself now, so <laughs> Clay Chawful <laughs> running out onto the field. You're having a hangover from that, that food we, we I ate. Am. <laughs> I am. I'm happy. At Nikki's West. Yeah. All right, Johnson in a quarterback still. He's going to fake the handoff to his running back, and he's going to throw the ball to number 22 out here in the flat. Uh, Osley makes the catch, but the, four, the the throw was a little off the mark, causing Osley to fall down, and it's going to be a no gain on the play. If this were the NFL, he might could have jumped up and uh, there wasn't, scored on that. There wasn't anybody around him, was there? No. There was not a soul man, around him. Man, man, man. If he could have figured out any way to hold on to his – keep his feeding, footing, he would have scored. All right, Clay Chalkful is going to have a single receiver near side, single receiver far side. In the pistol formation, Johnson hands off to his running back, Osley. It's going to pick up five yards possibly on the play. Yep, where Decatur grabs a hold of him, puts him on the ground, bringing up third down. I'll give him more than five. Give him seven. Jacob McCray did a nice job of pushing, uh, holding their, his uh, his offensive lineman up, but uh, – the, the backside pursuit wasn't there when he cut it back. Nobody was there. And uh, third down and four. Johnson looking to the sideline for Clay Chalkful. It's going to tell Osley to move over to his left side. Single wing to the right. Single receiver far side and near side. There's your snap. Hand off to Osley. Jackson tries to grab a hold of him, or McCray tries to grab a hold of him, and breaks the tackle, picks up first down yardage as he breaks into the Decatur territory. First down for Clay Chalkle. You know, Jacob McCray, you know, made first contact right there, and uh, but Jiren McDaniel came in right behind him and uh, saved a long, a long play. So, he, good job, Jiren. Yeah, McCray just a little bit off of him, and uh, if it had brought him down, it would have been fourth down, but didn't. First down, Clay Chauvel in our territory. Ten minutes remaining in the second quarter. Johnson ready for the snap. Fakes the handoff to Osley. Pressure up the middle from Decatur. It's going to hit number four over here on the near sideline. That would be Craver. It's going to be close to first down yardage. Give him a first down. It's going to be spotted at the 33-yard line. First down for Clay Chalkley. Really good job with their uh, receiver tiptoeing on the line and getting his feet in for the reception. Clay Chalkley running some more players onto the field. Looks like number 13, Johnson. Rodriguez Johnson is in running back now. Johnson, their quarterback, takes the snap, fakes the ball to him. It's going to throw out to the left where it's knocked down by Zaleski. Good play by Zaleski knocking the ball down. Incomplete pass on first down. Yeah, it looked like we had a chance of intercepting it, but uh, fell to the ground. And a nice job of Charlie Zaleski keeping his arm up and batting the, batting the ball down. Number 13 for Clay Chalkville. Johnson coming out of the game. Going back in, that running back is number 22, Osley for Clay Chalkville. Two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Second down and 10, moving his running back from right to left. He's going to hand the ball off, picking and choosing his hole as he makes yardage up the middle against Decatur. Probably going to be a gain of about five, four or five on the play. It's bringing up third down. 
number 50. I would say we're uh, in two down territory. They're not going to kick the ball, so we got to stop them for two plays right here, not get them, not let them get a first down. 9-24 remaining in the second quarter. Clay Chalkville has the ball at Decatur's 30-yard line. Near hash mark as you listen. Clay Chalkville's now moving left to right. Three receivers far side. Johnson has Osley standing to his left. He's going to send a man in motion. Once again, he's going to orbit him around. It's going to be that fake pass out to the left. He's going to go to the end zone where he has a receiver out there, but he overthrows him, number 11 for Decatur. Jackson Thatch was out there in coverage, and it's a good thing that it was overthrown because he had a couple steps on Jackson. I thought Jackson was doing a pretty good job of defending, but then he lost his footing, and uh, we're fortunate uh, for them not to come up with that catch for a touchdown. Yeah, but we were better prepared that time. We were at least somewhere close to both receivers out in the route, so that's encouraging. Now, see if we can just stop them on this fourth down. That'd be big for us. Fourth down and seven for Clay Chalkville. Johnson has Osley standing to his left. Single receiver near side, two receivers far side. Fake the handoff. Pressure up the middle by Decatur. It's going to break the hand. He's going to run for it. It's going to be a a penalty play. Yep, it's going to be a hold as he stumbles across the 30 up to the 25-yard line. Goes out of bounds at the 25. And it's, yes, he did not pick up first down yardage. So it's going to be a holding call against Clay Chalkful. And I guess we'll we'll decline that and take the ball. Well, yeah, he better not. What? What? Oh, well, Coach Atkott was pointing like, okay, now we go. We're going. <laughs> okay. He was like, push him back. I'm you like, well, yeah, no, we got the scared? ball. <laughs> I thought I'd miss something there for a minute. Okay. He was, he was pointing back like, we want first down. We want the ball. But then, right. then he gave the old, you know, wave it off motion. So. Okay, so Decatur's defense stands tall, keeps Clay Chalkful out of the end zone, and it will be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders. The ball spotted at their own 25-yard line. 22 to nothing is the score. Clay Chalkful leading our Decatur Red Raiders. 847 remaining in the first quarter. All we need is a little momentum, and uh, you're right. Big stop right here. Big opportunity in front of us. Ellis. It looked like they were moving on the play. Hands off to Keandre. Keandre gets across the 25 to the 26-yard line where he gets wrapped up and dumped hard back around the eight around the 22-yard line. <laughs> Keandre got up and tried to help him over and says, son, you're the one that got dumped. I don't think you need to help them Hey, up. but that's good they sportsmanship, right? That's good yeah, sportsmanship. He was listening to, to the PS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a yard on the play. Second down and nine. Ball spotted at the 26-yard line of Decatur. Ellis. What's Jaden Brown wearing, those green gloves? You think they're going to help him bring down a touchdown I they can right catch here? A ball. Ellis takes the snap. He's going to throw out towards Jackson Waller. He's going to throw that fastball incomplete. It's going to hit the dirt and go to the backstop, but it's going to bring up a third down for Decatur, third down and nine. I think if uh, Ellis would just kind of settle down a little bit, put a little bit too much mustard on it, but uh, just hang in the pocket a little bit more. He's got more time than what he thinks, and uh, but he's going to have to do it on this down, third down and long. That number seven, again, almost uh, picked again. He He's keying on that that out right there. Clay Chalkful showing pressure up the middle. Ellis takes the snap. Pressure coming from Clay Chalkful. Tries to hit Jacks uh, out on the, let's say, no, that was Waller out around the 35-yard line. Ball falls to the turf. Incomplete pass. It's going to bring up fourth and long for Decatur. Well, we had him out there. A good pass would have been, the, and they, of course, you got to catch the ball, but uh, it was way out in front of Jack Waller and uh, just not a chance to catch the ball and uh, going to force Decatur to, for Poovy to punt again. Back deep for Clay Chalkful will be number four, Mario Craver, Craver and number nine, Jalen McBackwee. It's going to be a fair catch call for by McBackwee right at, the, at their own 40-yard line where he makes the catch. It's going to be first down and 10 for Clay Chalkful at that location. 7.45 remaining in the second quarter. Decatur makes their way out onto the field. 
play Chalkville. Running straight to the line of scrimmage, showing two receivers near side. Single receiver to the far side of the field. Johnson in the pistol formation. Takes the snap. He's going to hand off to his running back, going to the right. Stringing it out by Decatur. He's going to be pushed out of bounds. It's going to bring up second down for Clay Chalkville. Good job all the way down the line for Decatur's defense, uh, and containing and ending in uh, Jiren McDaniel pushing him out of bounds. Number 13 for Clay Chalkville. Johnson carrying the ball for the Cougars on that play. This time, Clay Chalkville is showing trips to the left, offensive left. He's got his running back standing to his left, moving him over to the right. Here comes the ball. It's going to be that little swing pass out to the left, and it's that Craver guy again. And man, he can absolutely he he can move. He carries the ball across midfield, across the forty-five, up to the Decatur's forty, easily picking up first down yardage as he glides across the field. First down for Clay Chalkwell. You know, another thing about Clay Chalkwell that that you can just notice is that is, is they're doing they're not making any mistakes on anything i mean they're fundamentally sound and, and just not not letting decatur have anything johnson ready for the snap looking to throw the ball out here to the right makes a good catch number three for clay chalk for marquis white it's going to cross the 35 yard line up to the 31 yard line where it's going to be first down for clay chalk there uh, that's number three again uh, the the commitment to tennessee but you know he put his foot in the ground and and made our first guy miss and he's not a big guy he's either. not a big guy but uh, he can, he can plant his foot in the ground and and move directions very quick. Clay Chalkville ready for their first down play. It's going to be a little dump pass to one of his running backs where Josh Turner close lines their number one, Lamar Krosky, as he's picking up oh, yardage. That's, that's number three again. Oh, was it number yeah. three? Uh-huh. And it's going to be a pickup of about six yards on the play as, as, as he – Close lined him as he went out of bounds. It wasn't an illegal play. It wasn't a dirty play at all. It's just how he was trying to make the tackle. So, second down and four for Clay Chalk. Clay Chalkville showing trips to the far side. Johnson takes the snap, hands off to Osley, coming over here to the right side. It's going to pick up a about, give him five yards on the play. It's going to be first down yardage for Clay Chalkville as they go into the red zone. Ball's going to be spotted just inside the 20-yard line. Well, yeah, and Duper in on the on the play. It's good to see him back out there at, uh, at linebacker. But uh, I thought that was Duper. No, well, maybe Duper it was. was in. Yeah, he was in that, okay. and Jairo McDaniel was kind of on his heels right there. My bad. The ball spotted at the 21-yard line. Johnson hands off to Osley. Now it is in the red zone as he runs over a Decatur Red Raider making his way up to the 15-yard line where it will be second down and four for Clay Chalkville. Yeah, Josh Turner, he hung on to his feet as his, as his body rolled over Josh, and uh, it's just power football now for Clay Chalkville. It seems like that they'll, they'll go out in each series uh, and say, hey, we're just going to run a certain series of plays and the sound of these little swing passes on this particular uh, series, and they've been just driving it down the field. 5.08 remaining in the second quarter. Johnson takes the snap, hands off to Osley, tries to go up the middle, sidesteps Red Raiders, crosses the 10-yard line, up to the 5, and into the end zone for the Clay Chalkville touchdown. Wow, an athletic run for uh, Chalkville there. Yeah, ZJ Matthews had him uh, had a shot at him about a little past the line of scrimmage, but uh, couldn't come up with the tackle. And, uh, and now, so it's... Uh, Another touchdown, 28 to nothing with 4.56 left, going for two points. All right. Now in at quarterback is number nine, Jalen McWaby. Kind of like a, almost like a, uh, you're going to have some sort of cat. It's pouring a wildcat formation. It's going to hand off to his running back. Decatur's all ready for that. 
Jacob McRae says, uh-uh, not today, and grabs him, throws him down to the ground, number 22. Osley, it's going to be a failed point after attempt. Your score with 4.56 remaining in the half, Clay Chalkville 28 and Decatur 0. So two for four is just as on two point conversions is just as good as four for four on one point conversions, right? Yeah, that's that that math? That's, that's, that's a good that's math. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, and well, you know, we we're we're fifty percent on the uh, on the two point conversions. We're doing good on that. yeah, yeah, stopping and, them, holding them out. And you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, that is, you know, it's okay, you know, when you're playing a team that you feel like you're going to beat, you know. But like what you said, when you start getting into stiffer competition, you know, that's. Yeah. That, that's yeah. when it could come into play. Yeah, so. but they, they haven't had any. I mean, you know, they're blowing everybody out. And I don't, you know, this is uh, this is a different bunch of cats out there, man. <laughs> the Cougars. Cougars. Do you know, for us, for Decatur, I mean, we I think we can score on them. We just got to, you know, they put their britches on just like we put ours on and Vasquez in to kick the ball. This one's going to be a little bit short. It's going to come around around the 20-yard line where Jaron takes it in there. He crosses the 25 up to the 26, 27, 28-yard line where it will be first down for the Decatur Red Raiders. You know, I think we've got to make an adjustment on that kickoff because we're having to come up and catch that ball every time. They're not going to kick it behind us, so we need to come up and we need to catch the ball with some yeah, steam rolling and get some momentum yeah, but I, and hit it, the gap. It looks like all our guys are just kind of afraid to to engage. And, uh, you know, right now it's just we need to show a little moxie, hit somebody. and Well, you got nothing to lose now. Uh, yeah, At 28 right. to nothing, you might as well get engaged. That's because, right. Uh, it's, it's time to put up or shut up. All right, Ellis in a quarterback, ready for the snap. It's going to fake the hand off the banks. It's going to throw deep to for Waller. It's going to be nowhere close. The ball rough in the passer. It's going to fall harmlessly around the 40-yard line of Clay Chalkville, but there is a flag back at the 20-yard line, and Ellis is kind of moving around, checking to see if all the parts are working still correctly. Mark off a 15-yard penalty against Clay Chalkville for roughing the passer. It will be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders. Well, I hate to do this for Ellis, but if we can have about six more of those in a row, we'll be in the end zone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, take take six for the team, Ellis. You'll be taking a nice bath for the next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Need to get mad. Let's get mad, guys. Let's get mad. Banks DeMint standing behind Ellis. Ellis standing in the pistol formation. Has Ryan Kirk standing at a, at a wing to his left. Single receiver far side, two receivers near side. There's your snap, hands off to Banks. Banks goes to the right, passing the 40 up to the 45-yard line. Good pickup for Decatur there, bringing up second down. And he made him. He made the, the guy that eventually tackled him pay for it by running over him. So uh, there you go, Banks to men. Second down and five for Decatur. Banks says he's scared. And he's playing like it might be his last game, so he's laying it all on the line. Give it to me, baby. Same formation for Decatur, 409 remaining in the in this first half. Ellis steps up, gives everybody some instruction. That had to be motion. Everybody okay. was moving except the the uh penalty center. play. Penalty play on Snapper. here against Decatur. It will be a procedure penalty against the Decatur Red Raiders. Back them up five yards, so we just gave back the five yards that Banks just picked up for us. So that's going to bring up a second down in ten. Yeah, we can't do that. Um, I don't know what happened, but uh, but yeah, everybody was running like Jamari Washington coming in for Banks to mint. Decatur's going to have three receivers out here to the near side, single receiver near side, drifting back. Ellis looks to throw the ball deep, and there's nobody home except for Clay Chalkful, where it's intercepted around the 20-yard line, brings it up to his own 30, passes his own 40. He's holding. Up to the 45, close to the 50-yard line. Don't know exactly who Ellis was throwing it to there. He's throwing it to Jaden Brown, and Jaden just stopped. He just squid on it. So Pass was intercepted and about a 30-yard return. I uh, give him 25 yards. 
ball is going to be spotted at Clay Chalkful's own 48-yard line, where it will be first down and 10 with 322 remaining in the second quarter. What, what did I miss on that, uh, John? I mean, did Jaden just stop? I think Jaden just stopped, yeah. I don't know whether he was not in the, thinking that he was in the route or what, but uh, and I'm not saying that uh, Ellis didn't way overthrow it, but he just kind of stopped and – there was nobody out there but the uh, the defender, and he made a nice over-the-shoulder catch. Clay Chalkful, quarterback Johnson, takes the snap. It's going to drift back. It's going to throw deep, and it's going to be caught there by Craver. Is that Craver once again? It sure is. It's going to stand over a Decatur Red Raider. No penalty flag thrown on that as he shuffles his shoulders around. A little bit of showboating here by the Cougars. It's going to be a first down inside the red zone of Decatur, Yard, uh, inside De- uh, Decatur Red Raiders. At the 15-yard line, call it. First down and 10. Heck of a job of that receiver hanging on to that ball. Well, and Jacob McCray had pressure, and the quarterback just threw a moonshot. And uh, he's just confident his guy will come down with it, and he did. Johnson in at quarterback still. Takes the snap. Hands off to Osley. Osley moves to his left. Penalty play on the – uh, against the Cougars. Looks like it's going to be holding. Decatur stacks him up, pushes him back. It's going to be no pickup on the play. Good play there by the Decatur line. Yeah, you know, I hate to say it, but you're down 28 to nothing, and, you know, it, it's a little late to, to be getting your mad on, but better late than never. Looks like Decatur's kind of a little upset, and uh, maybe that time uh, put a little bit more oomph in it and going to get a penalty to boot. What is it? Whatever it was, holding. Back the ball up all the way to the 26-yard line. It's going to be second down and long four. Or is it first down? I can't tell by that. What down is this? Second down? It still says first down on the yard marker. It's first down. Okay, first first down. down. First down and 20. All right. Johnson in a quarterback. Three receivers near side. Waiting on the snap. Takes the snap. Drifts back a few steps. It's going to throw a... Fastball towards number three, uh, Marquise White. Ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be an incomplete pass, bringing up second down. I don't know what Jackson Thatch was going for right there. It seemed like he may have been going for the defender, and maybe he laid off of him not to not to get a penalty. 221 remaining in the second quarter. Your score uh, is Clay Chalkville, 28, Decatur, zero. Johnson in a quarterback, takes the snap. Going to fake this handoff to the running back. Move to his right. Minimal yardage as he gallops up to about the 20-yard line. Probably a pickup of about five on the play, bringing up third down. So if we could put a hat on that ball the way that quarterback carries the ball, a loaf of bread, we could cause a fumble. No doubt about it. Well, he uh, Will and Lopez comes out and, and tackles him. But you know who this dude run, who reminds me of? He reminds me he runs like Cam Newton. Yeah, he really he, does. He looked just like Cam Newton. Running. Well, he's holding the ball away. His helmet fits on his head. I mean, third down and 15 for Clay Chaffle. Decatur nearly jumps, gets back on side, doesn't cross. Instant pressure. It's going to be a throw towards the back of the end zone. It's going to be a touchdown for Clay Chaffle. Now, I tell you what, you couldn't throw the ball. You couldn't run over into the back of the end zone and handed it to him any better than that. It was a was, was twenty-five. He in the end zone? Oh, yeah. Did he put his feet down? He, he got a, He got. He shuffled feet his feet at the end, and uh, if he would have been in full stride, he wouldn't have. But he did a quick stutter step, and he got him in. Great throw, great catch by the Clay Chalkful, uh number three. There that was I number believe. nine. Oh, wasn't was it, it nine? Okay, I thought it was number three. Here they are going for two once again, and it's going to be completed this time to number three in the end zone, Marquise White for the two-point conversion. So, with 132 remaining in the first half, your score is Clay Chalkville 34, Decatur 0. Well, what do you say about that? I mean, you know, that was one of those in the back of the end zone, had to stretch out to catch it and brought down two feet right there at the back of the end zone and got both of them down. And uh, 132 left in the half. And, you know, they, they score off a Decatur turnover, and that's just something you don't want to do. But I can tell you, we're we're seeing a different brand of football tonight. Yeah, uh, something yeah. that we hadn't seen all no, year. No, 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 no. I, mean, I think you could probably take. You know, 
I think we could. I was going to say we could take the best out of all the teams that we've played and put them together on one team, and not sure that the, I'm not that, sure about that, that. That match up against this team. Like I said, I, do you see a weakness in, in uh, any eleven players out there? No. Oh, like you said, the kicker is the only one, maybe. Vasquez kicks the ball. It's going to come down around the 17-yard line, brought in by Jiren there, passes the 25 up to the 30. He's going to run out of bounds short of the 35. Well, we have all of you people still listening in in uh, YouTube land. We want to thank you for listening in this year on this experiment gone wild, you might say, for Decatur High School, putting us three in the uh, broadcasting position and trying to figure out how in the world to – uh, bring these ball games to you on YouTube. We want to thank you for listening, and we also want to invite you to hit the like button for us, and please let folks know about the, this YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate it. 124 remaining in the first half. Ellis is going to hand off to Ryan Kirk, going up the middle. Is going to pick up a couple yards on the play. Is that Ryan? No, it's Keandre. Keandre. Keandre, yeah. Keandre runs the ball up the middle. Give him a gain of about two on the play. It's going to bring up second down and eight. These guys are just just so big, and they they grab hold of Keandre and just swallow him up. He's like a leaf to these, to these defensive linemen. We're inside a minute now. Twenty-one to seven. Hartzell is getting beat by Gardendale. We just heard over the intercom. Ellis takes the snap, and Keandre is going to run to his right. Yeah, he's going to pick up a gain of, I bet you, two Game feet. Quarter. It's going to bring up a third down and about seven. We're well, going to get it north and south there. Uh, 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 let's burn this 37 off the clock. I mean, you know, we don't need to be punting Game back to him because uh, let's see, what have they not done? They had not run a punt back yeah. yet. So we didn't need to get out of bounds then unless we're trying to score right here. Stop the clock. Third down and seven for Decatur. Ellis looking to the sideline. Has Waller to the far side. He's got two receivers near side. Looks like Jaden Brown and Jaron McDaniel. He's going to run the ball with Ryan Kirk over here to the left. Ryan's going to be lucky to get across the 40-yard, Decatur's own 40-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of about three yards on the play where it's going to bring up fourth down and six. Five and a half. Well, thankfully, Clay Chaw was not calling a timeout. I don't think they – have they called a timeout? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I think they're content to allow us just to let it roll out. <laughs> and once again, like – at least throw a Hail Mary right here. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, we tried that a little while ago. <laughs> now we're going to – Decatur's locker room is like a half a mile away, so they're going to run that way and – Clay Choff was going to jog off like, uh, okay, well, this is done. All right, so that's the end of your first half. And Clay Chalk full leads Decatur by score, 36 to nothing. We do not have a halftime interview. I was I was just slammed. Slacking. You were slacking. I was slammed this week. And so I just, Who were you planning on getting? Huh? Who were you planning on getting? I really didn't have anything lined up. Uh I, so you weren't slammed. Just <laughs> well, no, I was. I was. I've been busy this week, and um, you've been busy educating the young minds of Decatur. I have been. We and appreciate so, all your sacrifices. Um, I've been. Well, you know, we had the barge party, and uh, yeah, I had. Right. You know, we are trying to get it. So we're moving in on progress report time. So I've been trying to get stuff graded. And anyway, I was just super busy, and I didn't. So let's talk about the barge party. You know, that that's a unique event, you know, a tradition that uh, we've, that John, I guess you've been running for about 30 years. Yeah, unfortunately. Yes. And then basically the concept of it is there all the senior uh, You know, I, I will say this. You know, sometimes you look back on your life, at least I am, you know, I, I still think I'm 20 years old, but, you know, I'm about to be 61. And that's your my, my mother, you know, she 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 thinks I'm still 18 too. But um <laughs> anyway, they uh you asked me how long we've been how long I've been doing the bar party since 30 some years and and then the, not too long ago I got a my like 15 right, year 
perfect attendance at Kiwanis. I'm thinking (laughs) there's something sad about that. How do you? I don't know. I don't know how you make that happen. There's something really sad about that. I don't know. I just go. I mean, you know, it's like I I just go. But, you know, it's almost like it's embarrassing. I, I, you know, is that what I guess that's what I do on Thursdays at lunch. (laughs) But, you know, it's sometimes it's time to. To move on and go on. Well, the barge party, I can remember as a – we used to do it at uh, Jay's Landing from when I – did the barge used to be at Jay's Landing? Yeah, yeah, it did. That's it did. where I think our barge party was. But it's something you remember. And, I mean, as, as a younger guy coming in, I mean, you always look forward to that barge party because it's right before the last game of the year. And, you know, you, you get your dad there and, and your dad gets to see – and experience kind of the camaraderie of all the guys and it's just something special i mean it you know and i think that's decatur's good at at, at doing things like that and keeping things consistent and kudos to you john yeah, for yeah. keeping that going for 30 years you know i, I do want to say this too that uh, uh jennifer thompson she 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 helped me understand all this connection with zj matthews and uh, zj matthews is jennifer's great not uh, grandchild. Yeah. Let me let me back up. C.J. Matthews is Stanley Thompson's grandson, grandson, right? And and Jennifer is Stanley's sister. Stanley played football at Decatur. He was two years ahead of me. He was uh, Stanley Thompson ran just like Gail Sayers, and uh, we called him Pud. But uh, Stanley's a great guy, and Jennifer. His sister went to school with me and graduated with me and, and ZJ. So it's her, her grand nephew. That would be it, right? Great nephew. Great nephew. I don't know. It's Stanley's. It's it, it, y'all. y'all but she that. did give you a shout out on Twitter. We read on the way down well, here. I think she, she explained it. To, she tried to, to define what that to, relation was. Yeah, it's a dumb on me, but uh, it gives me an opportunity to not only talk about ZJ, but I can talk about pudding. And then I can also talk about Jennifer, who's a good friend. And I'm sure she's friend. listening tonight. She I, sounds like one of our loyal listeners. I, I, I so, hope so. I hope who who else do we have loyal out there that we need to give a shout out to? I'm sure my mom and dad in uh, Trinity, Alabama, Gary and Linda Collins are listening. Love you guys. I'll say hello to my wife. I don't think she's listening tonight, though. I, she was in Huntsville the last I uh, heard from her. So I, her and my daughter were. Uh, in Huntsville, looking for earrings for a formal. So uh, I haven't heard. Hold back on, from hold on, hold on. <laughs> They're doing what? Looking for earrings for a formal? looking for earrings. Well, the beauty of technology is that you don't have to be at home to listen. You can be on the road, just like my buddies on the way out to Arkansas to check on the duck hole. They're listening to us right now. Grant McKelvey, Brandon Price. That's great. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys for listening to us. And uh, I think they just cashed in on a uh, a trip to a store in Memphis. I can't tell you where it was, but they got some good. So well, that's good, good for them. That's good. <laughs> yeah, Brandon needs some uh, another toy to play with. <laughs> and I got to give a shout out, uh, Hudson, my son, and, and Ashley, I'm sure, at home uh, in the comfort of the, of the heat on Brookside Drive in Decatur and uh, – Love you guys too. You know, if I had a, if I had something to sit on, if, I'd be in a whole lot better state than what I am right now. Well, I will this say bench this: bench is cold. I, I got one, uh, one shorties boys. Bobby Murphy is listening. My my father in law. He's listening with uh, his wife Sybil, who takes uh, good care of him and care of the family. And so uh, we need we need some more shorties boys down here, Bobby. Billy Wayne, I need to I need to get in contact with Billy Wayne see if he knows how to use YouTube so that he can listen to us. Billy Wayne Hardeman. And I, I know we got to have John Sturgis uh, listen to us. A trusty John Sturgis. Where are you? Where are you? He's where are be. you, Johnny? Shake your hands at us, John. Where are you? Sorry, we couldn't be over there with you tonight. Well, I saw somebody raise their hand, but it wasn't <laughs> Sturge. I know it's a special night for John. Uh, he, his son is a senior, and and. Uh, you know, it's uh, 
this, this group of seniors have, have a real special bond, even the, the parents. I mean, you, you can see how they take care of the boys and uh, how they support them on the pregame meals. And uh, it's similar to, you know, when I was in school, I, I can remember how, how involved my mother was. So gentlemen do is starting to fall. So is, is how's the computer over there? Oh, we're good. Uh, oh yeah. My, I want to say shout out to my wife, Amy. I guess she's probably watching another team on, on, on TV and listening to us. So uh, you think she's disappointed or excited or what? Uh, well, she's probably double disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> uh, you know, she's a, uh, She's definitely a red writer at heart, and and uh, she's got this other thing she also pulls for because she teaches some of these kids, and uh, but uh, and that yeah, is I, her alma mater. Yeah, I think that maybe the disappointment is on, on both sides, but we're listening to the Decatur Red Raider marching band and uh, doing a great job on the field, by the way. And uh, you know, we need to say thank you to Lane Barnett. Yes. Yes. Lane Barnett is the new athletic coordinator for Decatur City Schools, and Lane has helped me and John here with coordinating with uh, schools that we're about to visit, and as far as our broadcast, and Lane, we appreciate everything you did. John, you want to add on to that? Well, I just, you know, Lane's been really good to us and uh, in helping us, and Lana Barnett, or his, Lane's uh, wife who works for Decatur High School, and an integral part of, of us getting on the air, and they've been so so supportive. So, uh, and, and one thing I do want to to uh, remind everybody is that that this particular setup means that basketball, baseball, and we don't have hockey, do we? Softball, no hockey, uh, volleyball, any of that uh, can can be broadcast for for Decatur High School, and so. That's just another little – it's not just a football thing. It's all sports. You know, as long as they can find somebody to run it and speak into it, they can – I was can about to say, are you volunteering? No, <laughs> I'm not. No, that would be somebody else doing all that. But uh, I, I, And, by the way, I, I missed the shout-out to my grandkids. They're all at uh, Shelton and Josh uh, Carnley. That's my uh, daughter and son-in-law. They're all over there. Jenny Tyler and – Bradley Meadows, their kids. So I'm going to give them a shout out that they can uh, replay tomorrow. So shouting out to June. Hey, June. And to Lola Hazel. Hey, Lola Hazel. To Sims. Hey, Sims. And to Wynn, who Wynn is probably uh, slobbering around doing something. But uh, hello to all my grandkids. It's good stuff. Good stuff. You're you looking mighty good in that. That top hat you got on that toboggan, yeah. How's that? Is that keeping you keeping you warm? Keeps my head warm. Wesley Perry, also texting in tonight, so we should give out a shout out to old Wesley. And I guess we probably should say thank you to Leslie Russell as well, yes, the uh, definitely. principal principal of Decatur High. She was uh, right, instrumental, and in when we when we lost the radio station, when uh, Doctor Burns, you know, he sold the radio station and the. New owners had no desire whatsoever for local sports to be carried. You know, I haven't even tuned in 1400. Is it even still? I, on the tuned, air? In, I tuned into it this morning and it was static. It's white I, noise. Yeah, I don't think it's even on the air anymore. So. so I tell you, Leslie, you know, I'm at the beginning of the school year. I mean, I'm sure she had a hundred things going on and she made this a priority to make it happen. So uh, a lot of people came together to do that. But uh, uh, we've had a good year. I've had a That's lot of fun. It's not over yet, baby. <laughs> 36 to nothing is not something we can't. Hey, listen, if we have the same, well, crap. we have the same the outcome of uh, the Athens game, we'll still get beat by one. Yeah. 35 nothing. Yeah. It'd be 30. That'd be you something, would wouldn't it? Yeah, it would I think we might go for two. I think we would, I think we would too. <laughs> but it's not over with. I'm sure Coach Adcock and him are talking about guys. Y'all don't need to be scared of these guys. Quit playing scared. Let's go out there and play. Clay Chalk with that band taking to the field right now. And I believe that we are going to be entertained. They remind me of J.O. Johnson back in the day. They bring the energy, folks. Yeah, look at the drum bass. Yeah. Well, anyway, Miss Russell, we appreciate everything that you did to get this back on the air. Like I said, it was quick notice that we found out that we were not going to be on the air, and there was a whole lot Didn't of. Didn't we miss a game? Oh, yeah, we, we missed did the miss Russell a game. game. We missed the Russell game because we everything was being 
put together for us to be able to, you know, get on the air on YouTube. So you and I traveled to Russellville, and uh, um, but uh, everything didn't come into fruition until the next week. Hey, we're forgetting somebody who's extremely important, Brian Keenum. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Brian, Brian's an IT guy with Decatur High School, and he was the really the mastermind of, of – ordering all this stuff that, that we can get on and teaching us how to do that. And there were several times early on that we called We him. were calling Brian. We were calling him from location. And, uh, you know, hey, what, what do we push this button? Push this button. Uh, you know, so it's uh, he's, he was really integral, another integral part of, of a team that came together to this make is, this thing work. This is no small deal, folks, what we put together up here. The uh, Clay Chalkville folks were – Awfully nice to set us up a table, and we're looking at a table that is full of instruments, computers, wires, and uh, um, I'm glad I'm glad you two know how to put all that together. Well, I know I, I know how to put the microphones together, and that's about it. I tell you, Brad. I mean, he gave us this little cheat sheet of how to how to turn the computer on, how to get the Wi-Fi on, the password, and you know, I, I use that tonight. So, Brad, that's a gift that keeps Brian. on giving. So, that, Brian, Brian, that's Brian. a gift that keeps yeah. on giving. So, thank you. Well, and let me just and let me say this too: is that uh, they Clay Chauvel has no radio, has no anything like that, and uh, to, for Decatur to have that, that's a big plus. And and I'll just tell you this too: I'm looking around. We're sitting on the home side, and I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, here's a ten and O team. They're number one in the state. They're absolutely fantastic football team. And, you know, they got a pretty good crowd. But it's it I think what you got at Ogle Stadium on Friday nights is a lot better than this. And that that's a testament to the fan base that comes out and, and, and watches and supports the Cater Red Raiders. Those of you that are listening at home, we do not know the direction in which this will go next year. I know that some of the thoughts were of Having a maybe some sort of media team with the uh, uh, as a class at Decatur and trying to put together you know sponsorships and all that. So you know if you are uh, interested in uh, being a you know a sponsor of Red Raider football next year, you might want to be during summertime next year you know, wanting to get in contact with somebody at Decatur High School in, in as far as trying to get some sort of information about ads or something that will be played during or read during the uh, during the ball games. Six minutes and eight seconds remaining in halftime. The Clay Chalkville band out on the field. Just sitting here enjoying the evening. You know, I, I, I don't want to say it's over, so, but I am going to make a comment that that I saw last week, and it, it really took me back to my senior year in high school when uh, when I finally realized it was over. And, uh, man, I bawled like a baby. But I saw I, – I know it was uh, Banks DeMint and I, I believe maybe Jacob McRae after everybody had gone to the locker room. I mean, it was still raining, pouring. And they walked back out to the to the D, the big D in the middle of the field. And, man, you could just tell. I mean, it kind of hit me, gave me chills. And I know this game means a lot to them. And uh, they poured their heart and soul into it. So I wanted to, to, to tip my cap for what I saw. Because I, I've, in previous years, I've seen guys, you know, walk off the field and, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. But, but I was glad to see that they're bringing it back. And uh, – and they've laid a good foundation. I mean, we, we've got a good junior class coming in that's contributors, but uh, but hats off to the senior class. Absolutely. I remember my senior year. We went uh, we went nine and one during the regular season, and at our, the first round of the playoffs, we played Butler and uh, got beat. And I remember sobbing underneath the stadium. And I remember Coach Rivers, his I, uh, the part of his. Speech, post-game speech, was is something that I will never forget, and how true it was. I will never forget him saying, "Boys, you will learn a lot more from losing tonight than if we would have won out the rest of the season." Let me just and, say and something. He was so right. Let me just say something. Y'all are a bunch of dang weenies. All this oh, crying. And you stuff. didn't cry, so you oh, didn't man. care, huh? I didn't cry. Huh? <laughs> I can remember. No, I can remember. I was on the kickoff return team. 
and there was a last play of my football career, and I, I don't know who the guy was. I don't know what number. I pointed him out, and I, I hit that guy as hard as I could hit him because I knew that was the final play of my football career. I, You know, my brother went on to play at Vanderbilt, and he had four years of more football, but that was it for me. Um, I was no, an overachiever as it was. So. I, I was uh, My sophomore year, we got beat in the semifinals on the last play, and then – and then the next year, my junior year, was triple overtime to Walker County. I was mad. <laughs> but my senior year, you know, five and five, we beat Austin, and it was over. Yeah, right, right. You know, I, I and you were okay with it. I don't yeah, remember right. getting emotional yeah. about it. But that's, you know, I might have in my own secret way. <laughs> you were thinking about what you were doing after the game, huh? Is that what you were? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. John was thinking he wasn't going to have to run sprints after practice anymore. <laughs> Or make Coach Rivers. Paddle. I was thinking that you know what, what me and Sartain were going to do on the river the next summer, probably. <laughs> that's okay. If y'all are sensitive, that's okay. I can live we're with passionate. that. Passionate. I can understand. That's that. what Coach Adcock talked about. What is what separates somebody on this field is the passion, right? Oh, okay. So, were you passionate? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. I'm a passionate okay. guy. Yeah. Oh well, I I have no shame. I have there. I I will. I have no shame in admitting that I have cried. I have cried after middle school games before. Get so attached to boys, and they get out there and play their hearts out. And you win a championship, and we have. I have been a member of two championship teams, and the way those boys would get out there and fight, and oh, it was it was. I was really really proud well, of some of those. Hey, things. y'all are in good company because Kathy Wilkes. She cried. She just texted me. She said she cried after the triple overtime loss. Oh, walking out. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. I mean, that's that's good stuff. That's okay. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I just don't remember crying. No. I was mad. I was mad because we lost. You remember the triple overtime game against Austin? That we lost a couple of years ago. Yes, yes. I, had oh, I was on the field. Yeah, yeah I was. Were y'all crying? I, I didn't cry. Oh about, Lord, that much. Everybody Man, just did. on the field did the splits. Oh my wow. goodness! Could you do that in your wildest dreams, John? Oh yeah, I could do that too. <laughs> I invite you to do it right now. <laughs> oh, that man. hurt me to watch. Brad Cheatham would have to be coming out there and getting me, hoisting me up. <laughs> These are the most calm, respectful fans I believe I've ever I've seen. I, I'm so glad we don't have white flickering lights everywhere. Me too. Me too. <laughs> They're I, not flickering a lot tonight, it doesn't sound like. I've already let it be known that I hope that that never comes to Ogle Stadium. Yeah. I do not. I was not a fan of lights turning off and on. Well, Wesley Perry wants to know. About Sartain. Yes, Sartain was a crier. He would cry all the time. Oh, did he cry? Yeah. So I can relate more to Sartain yeah, than cried. I can he, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sartain was the meanest player. He would be on the bottom of the pile. If you ever got down there with him, he'd be twisting your ankle or twisting your face. But I think Steve Meek, when we played, played Austin, he was on the bottom of the pile, twisting his face mask in the dirt. <laughs> I hope YouTube doesn't dock us for this Michael hey, is, Jackson is, uh, <laughs> music playing in the background. Does Alan listen to us? I mean, you no. Know, he's not. You'll, you'll have to send him he's the crowd for the asleep. halftime show. He's probably asleep right now. He's a lot older than I am. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. <laughs> Red Raiders have made their way across the, uh, what would you call that? Is that the baseball field? The I softball think it's field? a baseball field. <laughs> you can tell that the baseball it used to a, be a baseball field. Not re- okay, it has to be, but yeah, it's a, missing a dugout now. Anyway, Decatur High School has made their way across the wilderness there, and they have made their way to the field where they are now starting to go through their warm ups. No kidding, the the field it's an entire baseball field between here and where Decatur is having to run to get into the uh uh into their field house. So well, let me ask you this. What 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 does the team Charles need to do? What, what does the team need to do any team if you're 36 to nothing down to this Clay Chauvel team to get back in the game? I mean, these guys Clay Chauvel is playing the, the football game like um complete and total 
domination. Com- well, no, complete and total confidence that they're going to win the ball game and they're going to dominate you. And you know, it's not. It's it's like it's superior uh, in in every phase of the game. So what do you have to do if you're coming up against that? What does Coach Adcock tell these guys at halftime to, uh, you know, to to uh, what do you do? I mean. Focus on your job. Do your job. Stop focusing on what Clay Chalkful, what they're doing, and because you have no control over that. Let Clay Chalkful do their thing. You get out here and you do the best of what you can do. And if the best that you can do is not able to compete with them, then so be it. But get out here. Don't make mistakes. Do your job. Play to the best of your ability. And let the uh, let the chips fall where they may from there. Yeah, just go out and have fun. Give good effort. Have have passion and grit for the game, and uh, respect the fact that you got one more half of football to play, and uh, make it the best. You know you cannot control. You know you cannot control your talent. You cannot control your luck in a ball game or how things occur. But you know one thing that you can control, and that is effort and attitude. And uh, as long as the Red Raiders come out here and, you know, they show good effort and attitude and get out here and just get after somebody, don't play scared. Just get out here and do the best job you can. You know, that's all you can ask for as a coach. You know, I did see some of our guys late in the second quarter starting to look dejected with hands on the hip. we got to have good body language, and uh, it starts with that. And, again, just got to work hard. Work through it. Hartzell Tigers are still behind to the Gardendale Rockets, 21-7. to Still 21-7, to Hartzell and Gardendale. So. Is that Gardendale over Hartzell? Yes. I think uh, my wife Amy told me. What did she say? Let's see. These Birmingham boys are men super fast, too. Talking about the Gardendale Rockets. Isn't that right? The Rockets? Yes, they are. And they're good, too. I watched some film on them, and they are. They're good as well. All right, well, halftime is over. The Michael Jackson music has concluded. They've put 12 minutes up on the game clock, and the Red Raiders have made their way out onto the field. Decatur this half will be defending the west end zone, and they will be kicking from right to left as Clay Chalkful defends the east end zone. How about an onside kick? Kick is away by Owen Poovey. End over end kick into the end zone. Hey, we have beat them in the kickoff game. So it will be first down and 10 for Clay Chalkful at their own 20 yard line. Let's hope that's not our only kickoff of the game. So, Well, he sure did slam that one out. Y'all, we were talking about it coming down here. Owen Poovey's mom works here. She's an assistant uh, superintendent for the Clay Chalkful School District. Okay. Yeah. She left uh, at the end of last year to come down here. Johnson in at quarterback for Clay Chalkful. Fumble. 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 Snap. And Decatur does not get on it. The Clay Chalkful running back jumps Here's on it. It's going to be a loss two. of, they get on top of it. two. It looked like they uh, snapped it and it hit the hit up. The yeah. and, uh, that was wild looking. Number six is in at running back for Clay Chalkful, and that would be uh, Cameron Williams. It's going to be a, a fake handoff to him. Play action. He's going to throw it to Osley out here in the Big sideline. Man, Passes good. the 25 out to the 30-yard line where he's going to be pushed out of bounds close to the 35-yard line. First down for Clay Chalk. You know, Jiren's got to do a better job recognizing uh, he continued to go deep. The guy threw a little flat. He's got to get off his defender and come make the play. Clay Chalkful has first down and 10. Ball spotted at the 34 yard, their own 34-yard yard line. Johnson in at quarterback, has Osley standing off to his right, two receivers to the left, takes the snap, hands off to Osley. Osley crawls up to the middle, is going to stiff arm two Decatur Red Raiders, goes across the 40-yard line up to the 45, 50-yard line where he's pushed out of bounds. It's going to be another first down for Clay Chalkville. Number 13, Rodriguez Johnson, sophomore for Clay Chalkville. I mean, he he initiated contact with about three defenders of Decatur and he wanted every bit of it. I'm not sure our defenders did. Well, it looked like that uh, we didn't want to hit him. We didn't want to hit him. We were trying to arm tackle him, and he's not going to 
I'm going to take they did that. Derrick Henry on Jiren McDaniel. Williams. Williams in at running back now for Clay Chalkle. Johnson takes the snap, hands off to Williams, going up the middle, runs into Jacob McCray. Jacob McCray is trying to push him back, and now a host of Decatur Red Raiders are trying to push him. And now the Clay Chalkville offensive line gets involved, pushing him. I don't understand. Into you not whistle. I don't the whistle. Yeah, they should have. They should have blown a whistle. I mean, it's going to be a pickup of eight on the play, bringing up second down and two. Should have been a pickup of about three, and they. Uh, should have been a holding penalty because if they're going to do that, yeah, they need to hold him. All right. Second down and two for Clay Chalkville. Ball is now at the Decatur's 41 yard line. Johnson takes the snap, hands off to Williams. Williams goes to the left side, slides under a tackle from Decatur, gets up to about the 34 yard line. First down yardage for Clay Chalkville. It's going to be first down for the Cougars there. Looks like Jacob McRae is pleading to the referee for a hold, uh, but he didn't get it. Uh, see if that pays off going forward. First down and 10 for Clay Chogville. Ball spotted at the 33-yard line. First down and 10. Johnson, pistol formation, takes the snap, hands off to Williams. Moving over here to the right side. There's your flag that we've been calling for for the past two plays. And I can tell you right now, Jacob McRae had his jersey nearly t- tugged off of him. This time, they are going to call the holding, and it's going to back Clay Chalkville up 10 yards on the play. I guess it helped. Well, I mean, you know, come on, Mr. Ref. I mean, if he's holding them every time, you need to call it every time. Well, Jacob, Jacob has been held the past four plays in a row. And like you said, he was complaining to the official a few minutes ago, and he must have finally got the eye to of the official just to take a look at it, and he saw what we've been saying. It'll result in the ball being placed at the 43-yard line. First down and 20, actually 20, about 22 yards know, we for got the a... Clay Chalkville Cougars, and we've got a stoppage in play. Are they thinking they took it back too far? I don't It'd know. Be a spot maybe, maybe the spot. Well, they're going to leave it where it is. Yeah. It's actually second down. No, first down at 20 for Clay Chalkville. Ball spotted at the 43-yard line. Single receiver near side, single receiver far side. Johnson in at quarterback, fakes the hand off to Osley, looking to throw the ball deep. It's going to hit Jackson Thatch in the back of the jersey. Jackson, turn around. Intercept it, son. What are we doing? There was a flag. Oh, Oh my my gosh. That long? How long did it take that? We have a – the ball fell harmlessly to the ground. It's it hit be Jackson a, Thatch in the – it has to be it it's gotta a sportsmanship. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be a sportsmanship type penalty. It's a dead ball or if it's if – it's, Sounds like maybe they called something on Z.J. Matthews. See if it's a dead ball foul. But that definitely can't be, can't be uh, pass interference. ZJ was Unless running step for said step. Something vital. And I, I didn't see ZJ or I didn't see him grab anybody. I didn't or was it ZJ or Jackson? Which one was it? Well, it was Jackson, Jackson was right Jackson on. Jackson Thatch was the one that was but, in coverage. But and I didn't see ZJ was coming parents. over the top from safety. This is incredible. Pass They're going to call pass wow. interference against Decatur. And that official waited a good five unless he, seconds. Unless he couldn't find his his uh, his flag, I, that I was know. a but it horrible call. Pass interference against the Decatur Red Raiders. Well, and I think now, if Jackson would have just turned his head around, he could have avoided that. And now uh, Coach Adcock is going to call a timeout, and he he he's going to have a little talk with the officials right here, and he's going to say, "Hey, look here." You know, it's 36 to nothing. You're going to wait five seconds after a play to throw a flag on a on a mystery call like that? Come on, give me a break. It's getting chilly, guys. Yeah, I'm about to dig around in my backpack for my uh, for my um, toboggan. Y'all, y'all carry me for a minute. I feel like I'm in a deer stand, but I don't have my buddy heater. Your what heater? Buddy heater. Buddy? Yeah, you know the buddy heater? They have the little propane? On? No, they get the little propane tank and oh, I'm, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I, I thought you what? said buddy. <laughs> that's what. That's what I said. You thought I said 
Buddy. Buddy. Okay. I thought you said buddy. Like hey, well, sit on it. We got – we do have 35 listeners still, so we, we appreciate oh, the boy. folks that are still Arab hanging in there with us. Arab. 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 Uh, Arab is losing. <laughs> what was the score? Did, did you I hear? was too Arab. busy listening to Arab. <laughs> no, he said Arab. Well, you know, I mean, what are you going to say? What do you, what do you Decatur. I bet you uh, – Dr. Johnny Berry would be more than happy to tell him what the correct pronunciation would be. So what are we? Are we what down is it? Do we know? Uh, it's first, first down, down because we're coming off of the uh, pass interference. Isn't that right? So, all right. So we're coming out of timeout now. Johnson's still in quarterback. Hands off to his running back where he is stuck by Jacob McCray no, right there no, at the 29-yard no. line. That boy Jacob. Also oh, Soto on the, on the stop there. Red Raiders. <laughs> and Jacob, <laughs> he stepped and on his fingers as he was getting up off the ground. The running back there was number 13, Rodriguez Johnson. So I'm trying to get where I can hear y'all with my headphones here. All right. Johnson in a quarterback, high snap, pulls it down. Hands off to Williams, his running back. Stacked up once again by the Decatur Red Raiders. It's going to be maybe a gain of one or two on the play, bringing up third down. I think I just heard that uh, Muscle Shoals getting beat 14-7 to seven to Jackson Owen. Hartzell's getting beat 21-14. Hartzell scored. So Anyway, we're, we're going to focus on this one. Eight, going under eight minutes, 36 to nothing. Clay Chauvel, Jackson Owen. Johnson. Jackson Owen. Did I say it again this half? <laughs> Clay Chalkful, quarterback Johnson, has two receivers far side, waiting on the snap, running the play clock out. It's going to have, nope, he's going to play fake. He's going to throw a pass across the uh, middle. It's going to be completed to number five, uh, Cameron Williams, close to first down yardage. Give him first down yardage inside the 20. It's going to be first down for the Cougars there. Good coverage by Jackson Thatch. It was just a slant route and, uh, the receiver positioned his body between Jackson and the quarterback and a good throw, good catch, but uh, decent uh, coverage too. But it results in the first down. Ball spotted at the 22. It is just short of the 20-yard line. Give him the 22-yard line. First down and 10 for Clay Chalkville there. Johnson in at quarterback. Tight formation. Takes the snap. Hands off to Williams. Williams is going to stretch the ball over here inside. It's going to run inside the 20 up to the 10-yard line. Gets inside the 10-yard line. Nope, it looks like he's going to step out of bounds right around the 11 or 12-yard line by where the official is going to be standing. So it's going to bring up a waiting to see if it's going to be a first down or not. The ball is going to be spotted down at the 12-yard line. It is a first down for Clay Chalkwell there. You know, that was – that. Was, do you see the block of the wide receiver? He just stuck our defensive guy. Our defensive guy couldn't get off the block. Johnson has two receivers to the far side. Ball's on the near hash mark. Takes the snap. Hands off to Williams. Williams is going to run over a Decatur Red Raider. It's going to be tackled by Mylon Miller after a pickup of about three on the play, bringing up second down. Jacob McCray again on the stop. And uh, Jacob's just about on every play. Jacob McCray is somewhere around it. Ball spotted at the 10-yard line. It's going to be second down and eight. Johnson has Williams standing to his left. High snap. Gets the ball down. It's got to be holding over there on the left side. Decatur breaks off. Selusky gets off the hold, makes the tackle. It's going to be a pickup of about two yards on the play, bringing up third down and eight. You got to watch the run pass option right here. Third down, go to go. Coach Atcock said that the quarterback can run like crazy, but they don't ever want him to. They want him to throw the ball. And that dude, I, I guarantee you, he could probably take it around the end and, and put it in the end zone, but let's we'll see what they decide to do. 534 remaining in the third quarter. Jack's Clay Chalkful leading by a score of 36 <laughs> to nothing. Johnson in at quarterback. He's going to hand off to Williams. Williams is going to go to the right, bend back towards the middle of the line of scrimmage. Grabbed by the Decatur Red Raiders there, stacked up. Doesn't quite make the five-yard line. Giving the six, it's going to bring up a fourth down play for Clay Chocolate. Big fourth down here. i tell you what, Jacob McCray is leaving them on the field tonight. 
And that'll bring up fourth. See if we can't uh, stop them. And Got a stoppage of play. And now, not exactly oh, sure why the official ran in and stopped. Well, no, clock. it's clock's running. Yeah, they've restarted it now. And Clay Chalkful is going to run in their fleet foot package. Number four, Craver, back into yeah, the ball four. game, along with number nine, Jalen McWaby. They're going to have quad formation to the right, single wide out to the left. Johnson at quarterback, yeah. He's going to take the snap, drift back. He's going to throw a fade to the corner, and it's going to be about 20 yards out of bounds. Not exactly what you're looking for. It's going to bring up first down for Decatur. Turnover on downs. Good job by the Decatur defense. Jacob McCray stuck the quarterback right there. I, I know he he heard footsteps, and that's probably why he, did, he wasn't able to connect in the end zone with his receiver. Well, they burned off a lot. A lot of the third quarter on that one drive. That's that's the first drive of the of the third quarter, right? Yeah. Is it? Is yeah, it? it is. We hadn't had the well, ball. That's the first time we've been on offense. You're yeah. right. It's about burn the whole yeah. quarter. What? No, we we came out with the ball the first half, didn't we? No, no. we kicked off. We to kicked them. off to them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ellison, a quarterback, hands off. It's going to be moved. The ball's going to be moved out to about the six yard line. Running the ball for Decatur. I can't see a number. Was it Keandre? Yes. Yeah, Keandre, Keandre. Yep, number six. Give him a gain of one on the play. It's just Clay Chalkful is so athletic. Every position. If they get, if somebody gets out of position or gets moved, one of their teammates will quickly move in and fill up the hole. It's, they're very quick and very athletic. Decatur comes out. Two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Ellis takes the snap. He's going to hand off to Keandre. Keandre fumbles, fumbles the ball, ball there at the seven-yard line. Jumped on real quick by one of the Decatur offensive linemen. I believe that was number 74 for Decatur that jumped on the fumble, Cody Asher. It's going to bring up third down and nine for Decatur. Well, it looked like that uh... – Maybe had a little bit of a chance of getting out, but uh, Keandre is so small. One guy just reached out there and grabbed him and pulled him down and uh, sets up a long third down. Keandre runs off the field holding his arm, and at running back now is Ryan Kirk. Ellis, standing at his own two-yard line, takes the snap, throws a pass out here to Jack Waller, and ball hit Jack, but Jack wasn't ready to catch it. The ball hit him as he was coming out of his break, and ball well, falls been woefully around. short. It wouldn't even got half of the yardage. Have we have have we? Um, I guess we have uh, completed a couple of passes, and maybe on that first series, but I can't remember one that we've completed since. Yeah, I, I think you you said it in the first half, but he's getting that pressure and he's trying to hurry the ball. He's not letting the play develop, and. He's throwing it behind the guys, so we got to get it going. And the kick for Decatur is Owen Poopy. Tight kick formation. Clay Chawful doesn't show much pressure. They're going to make the catch around the 49-yard line, moving quickly up to the 40, 35, 30, up to the Decatur 25-yard line will be number nine, McQuabby, for Clay Chawful. It's going to be first down and 10 for Clay Chawful there. John, do we have any more PSAs that we need to read? Nah, I think we're good. <laughs> okay. I think everybody socially distanced, masked up, not touching nobody. We did get an update on the uh, Hartzell-Gardendale score, 28-14 Gardendale. Is that what West texted us? It is. I, okay. uh, Amy had already texted me that. but You didn't want to talk about Hartzell anymore, did you? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm focused on the Red Rider. Thank you, Wes. All right, Clay Chalkful. In on offense, Johnson takes the snap. He's going to drift back, wanting to throw the ball. Pressure up the middle, and he's going to sidestep some of it. Zaleski is going to come in and take a crack at him. He's going to pick up a couple of yards on the play. Looks like he may pick up like three yards on the play, but oh, in the process, yeah, Johnson for Clay Chalkful gets his headgear knocked off of him. He's going to have to come out for a play. Number nine for Clay Chalkful is going to go in and take his place. Jalen McWabi. I, I believe that's how you pronounce your name, young man. If I'm 
mispronouncing it, you'll probably never know, and who cares? So it's going to be a second down and eight play for McQuabby there for uh, Clay Chalkful. Trying to draw Decatur offside, doesn't do so. Hands off to his running back, breaking up the middle, picking up first down yardage is number 13 for Clay Chalkful. Johnson is going to be a first down play. It's going to be inside the red zone. Give them the 15-yard line, first down for the Cougars. They parted the Red Sea there. I, there was no defender within five yards of him at the line of scrimmage. He made the way his way all the way up to the 13-yard line. It's going to be first down for Clay Chalkful there. So far there, Clay Chalkful is showing no signs of putting any subs in the ball game. They're still rolling with their first string. Johnson in a quarterback. Pistol formation, takes the snap, hands off to his running back, going to his right and gets Jacob stuck. McCray. I Jacob mean, McCray. stuck by Jacob McRae right there. He may have – he may have – Picked up a yard? No, he lost, he, he may lose a yard. You on know that, that one of the things about Clay Chaffle, they're running right at Jacob McCray, and McCray's just knocking them down as they come. Number so he may be perking somebody's interest if they're here scouting tonight. Number thirteen. Is I take him running. in a heartbeat. I mean, in a heartbeat, man. Number thirteen for Clay Chaffle is also Johnson. Their quarterback is Johnson, and number thirteen is Johnson. Johnson, the quarterback, takes the snap, hands off to number 13, Johnson, and is caught by Zalewski from behind. And this time we do get a quick whistle as Johnson breaks tackles, but forward progress was stopped, and it's going to bring up a third down for the Cougars there. Yeah, nice job of pursuit. Charlie Zalewski, he came in and grabbed him and held on to him, and it was a quick whistle. I mean, I I appreciate that, and – Ball is stiffening up on defense. Ball spotted at the 11-yard line, third down and eight. 15 seconds remaining in the quarter. Johnson takes the give to Johnson. He's going to throw. It's going to be intercepted by Zaleski at the three-yard line. He can go Across to the 10, 20, oh, yeah, up to right. the 30, 35. Makes his way up to the 40, 45-yard line. They closed in on him quick, didn't they, John? Huge, <laughs> huge interception for the Decatur Red Raiders. And Charles Zaleski with the pick. Hey, great, go, great, Red great hands by Charlie Zaleski right there. He picked it out of the air, and he turned around. I thought he had a chance, but uh, quickly no, no. was he denied. <laughs> He was motoring, though. He was going as fast as he could. But. Well, he was he was going top speed for Zaluski. He was. was moderate speed uh, though, uh, for the Cougars. What a great job of reaching out there and snatching it right out of the air. Well, as hard as he threw it, you know. He grabbed the back of the ball. I'm yeah, pretty sure I mean, that was, he was going a by. heck of a catch. Good job, Charlie. All right. Zaluski, great play. I was, that was hey, yeah, great. Have we see. ever talked about Zaluski? He's a homeschool guy, right? Yeah. He is a Tim Tebow project. That is correct. You know, a homeschool. And uh, he chose the Decatur Red Raiders for their uh, for their program. He, uh, well, we're lowering you, the flag. You gotta we're lowering the, the flag. Uh, so we're going to stand. The district, right? So he lives in our district, and that's why he went. he goes to Decatur. We used to do this at Decatur, lowering the flag at the start of the fourth quarter. I don't think our band knew what we were doing. <laughs> they didn't know what was going on. They're playing tag. There we go. All right. The lowering of the flag here at in Clay, Alabama. Decatur Red Raider marching band breaks into the tomahawk chop. <laughs> I tell you what. 
that, but that that's was okay. a great sight to see. I mean, it was a respectful thing, but the Clay Chalkwell guys, they were trying to tell our band to, to stop playing where they can lower the flag. Our band didn't know really what was going on. But, man, just to, in the day and age we live in with people not honoring the flag, that was tremendous to see. Ball is spotted at the 43-yard line. 28-21, Gardendale. See if we can just score. All right. Decatur takes the snap and is instantly surrounded by Clay Chalkful oh, defenders Decatur, as Decatur, Ellis hands, hands the ball the off to, to uh, Keandre. Keandre is going to have a loss of about five yards on the play, bringing up a second down and long for Decatur. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough go for uh, Keandre. I don't think he's – Got much yardage. In fact, Decatur's offense really hadn't generated a whole lot of yardage. And uh, see if we can uh, move the ball a little bit. Clay Chalkful showing a tight formation with their defense down in all four. They're going to beat Decatur's offense as they get into the backfield back once, again. once again. It's going to be another loss on the play, no, 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 bringing up really. third down and long. Well, that's just, you know, we've got to do a little bit better job of holding them out, and it's like we'll pour it in like water through your hands, and we just don't have any 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 way to move the ball. Look, looks like Coach Adcock has put the, all seniors in the game right now, letting them play right now. Third down and 17 for the Decatur Red Raiders. Clay Chogful. Jumps a little bit, making Decatur move, but the officials aren't going to stop it. It's going to be a completed pass to Jaden Brown. Jaden just about gets the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to bring up a third down and 10 situation for Decatur. There. Fourth, fourth, down, fourth down for Decatur. Clay Trogful is strong, and they are fast, and when – a pass is completed. It is like he is surrounded instantly by by three or four defenders. So it's, it's very impressive watching them uh, rally to the ball. Decatur trotting out their kick team, their and punt Jay team. And Jay Bubba are back to the punt. Tight punt formation for Decatur. Owen back deep. Good snap. Kick is away. Going to come down around the 26-yard line. Big bounce goes into the 20-yard line. Let it roll. Don't know, don't know why Jaden grabbed it. Jaden grabbed it while it was still in mid-bounce. That ball could have bounced another 10 yards on into the Clay Chalkville, uh, towards the Clay Chalkville end zone. But anyway, <laughs> touchdown there at the 17-yard line. 941 remaining in the ball game. Play Chalkville leads Decatur by a score of 36 to nothing. Three receivers far side for Clay Chalkville. It's going to tell his running back. Johnson's going to tell his running back to move to the other side. It's going to throw a, a pass, swing a pass out to the right side for Carver. He makes the or Craver, I'm sorry. Makes the reception. We get to him this time pretty quickly. He's going to be a pickup of about five yards on the play. Well, that was. I think that was a play that they scored on, and uh, it was a nice, better job of of keeping in front of him and closing in on him. Two or three guys responsible for the tackle. Clay Chalkful. Second down and five. Johnson waiting on the snap. Hands off to Johnson, going up the middle, grabbed by Jacob McCray, put down instantly. Don't believe there's going to be much of a gain on the play. In fact, he's lucky to make it back to the line of scrimmage, call it third down and five. Well, yeah, Clay Chauvel is, is kind of called off the dogs, I think. I think they figured that 36 is probably good enough, and uh, if they score, they score, but. And I think Jacob McCray is mad. Clay Chalkful takes the snap. Johnson is going to throw deep, trying to score another touchdown, but he throws the ball out of bounds as it crosses over the 40-yard line of Decatur. It's going to bring up a fourth down kicking situation for Clay Chalkful. You know, that's one of those passes, John. You're talking about how slim the sidelines are. The guy was looking back for the pass. He could have ran right into the fence. 
it was so far out of bounds. You know, in, in a certain way, you get used to doing this. That's an advantage on your part. You know, yeah. what you play here, and it's kind of like having a – like the Celtics used to play on that floor that had dead spots, and they knew where it was and all that. That's – you know, this little short field is – um short sideline can be a positive. Punt is away for Clay Chalkful. No. It's going to be fair caught at the Decatur's own 48-yard wow. line. Jaron McDaniel could easily catch the ball. He could have got five, run at least five yards. And run, but he likes to call fair catch, and it will be Decatur's ball. First and down and 10 at the their own 48-yard I mean, line. I'm sorry, but their punting team is almost Columbiana-esque. <laughs> that, that might be his first, second, maybe fourth, that, fifth. Punt all year, year. <laughs> all year, yeah. That's all year. All year. Eight fourteen remaining in the ball game. Ellis Dickman still in a quarterback. Takes the snap, looking to throw the ball out here on the right side. Jack makes the catch, and he's going to be thrown out of bounds at the Clay Chalkful forty nine yard line. The official on this side. There you go. Keep on, but there you go. I think we're about to take it in, guys. Yeah, I think we are too. I think we're going to. I think Jaden Brown time. Maybe it's Jamari Washington. Well, he time. hadn't been yeah. on all night. He's a captain. I hadn't seen him in all night. Who? Oh, he's in now. Yeah, Jamari Washington's in there. Has he been in all night? No, he's been on a, he's I been didn't on think before. So. Ellis, behind his center, takes the snap. Shotgun It's going to throw to Jaden Brown. Catch is going to be made at the 45. Sprints across the 40. First down pickup for the Decatur Red Raiders. Going to spot the ball very close to the 40 yard line of Clay Chalk. Maybe if we hit him in stride, he's still running out the back of the end zone. Uh, no, I don't think we don't think any. So? I don't think we have anybody that could break out in the open and beat the secondary. No, I, I, I don't think so. Decatur has two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball once again to Jaden. He makes the catch. Turns to the left, running down the Decatur sideline, crosses the 35 up to the 30. First down pickup for Decatur as he crosses, makes it up to about the 28-yard line of Clay Chalkville. The defender had a death grip on the jersey of J- Jaden Brown. Otherwise, I think he could have. Yeah, but he the had the house. death grip on him, man. <laughs> he had the kung fu grip on him. Million-dollar man. Kung fu grip. Pick up that engine. Back in the 1970s, remember that well. We and we're going to have a flag yeah, against Decatur. They may have uh, procedural start. penalty yeah. against the Decatur Red Raiders. Going to back them up five yards, bringing up first down and 15. Yeah, Ward Bouchelon just kind of raised up and repositioned himself. And, and, uh, Ellis has Banks DeMint standing to his right. Andre standing behind him. Step up. Instant in the- pressure coming from the right side. Get rid of it, Ellison. He's going to throw it out of bounds. And he hits a cheerleader in the back. She's okay. She's waving her pom pom at him. It's going to bring up second down and 15 for Decatur there. I think it's a real opportunity right there. Ellis could have stepped up in the pocket, maybe had something in the middle, but maybe he saw something I didn't. But uh... <laughs> he saw a bunch of big dudes with blue jerseys on. <laughs> yeah. And great pants. He didn't want any part of that. Huh? coming right at him. Yeah. We're definitely in four-down territory right now. 6.42 remaining in the fourth quarter. Clay Chalkville leads 36 to nothing. Ellis takes the snap, drifts back into the back of the pocket, hits Jamari Washington. He makes the catch at the 30-yard line. Uh, Big pickup of three yards on the play. It's going to bring up third down and forever. Jamari was uh, juggling that ball, and as he he backed, to the ground, uh, he, he snagged it and uh, came up caught, with that catch. I think he caught it three different times <laughs> across there. Ball spotted at the far hash mark as Decatur moves left to right. Two receivers either side for the Red Raiders. Ellis takes the snap. Banks to Mint steps up, picks up one of the blitzers for Clay Chalkville. Decatur has a Jaden Brown unguarded at the 10-yard line, and Ellis throws the ball out of bounds. One of the Decatur Red Raiders is down on the far sideline. Didn't can't see a number, but we're going to have a stoppage of play. Yeah, he was wide open. He had got behind the defenders, and and Ellis was being chased out of the pocket. Had to throw the ball across his body, and it just went to the outside and 
threw it out of my I think that's Jamar Washington. I think it is Jamari laying on his back on the far side over there. It's going to bring up a fourth down play. Fourth down play for Decatur, right? Yes, okay. that's right. He's up. Jamari's up. Putting pressure on his both feet. He's bending over and paying. Didn't he hurt his knee as a uh, sophomore? Sophomore. Brad Cheatham is over there talking to him. He has him, and he's helping him off the field right now. Hopefully it's one of those situations where he took a shot to the knee, and that might be one of those first shots where he's had that he's had, and it's really scary. Right after, when you've had knee surgery and that first good shot on a leg, it can it can really scare you. Hopefully that's all that it is. But he's up moving around. Yeah, but he had that win? His sophomore Three year. Three years ago? Yeah. Okay. All right, so fourth who, down. Who and, wants to catch one? Fourth down and fifteen for Decatur. I think Jack Sturgis. Let's let's talk about Jack Sturgis. See if he can catch him one. Jack Sturgis is closest receiver to us over here on the near side. Just inside is Waller. Jaden Brown is over on the far side. Ellis takes the snap. Happy feet drifts back, and it's going to fall incomplete. It's going to bring up first down for Clay Chalkville. At the thirty, at their own thirty-yard line. Well, he's trying to move backwards, and and uh, Ellis Dickman, he's moving backwards. He can't get set his feet and throw the ball, and, and it was just short. It would have been, I don't even think that he gained three yards. So, uh, not not good. Five fifty-seven remaining in your ball game. Clay Chalkful leads by a score of thirty-six to nothing. Surely this will be one of those situations where you tell your guys, okay, let's go out and let's run this clock out. Oops. Johnson still in at quarterback. Ready for the snap. He's going to hand off to Carver or Craver over here on the left side, stacked up by a bunch of Decatur Red Raiders. Give him two yards on the play. The officials really do. They – Need to blow the whistle a little bit quicker. Take a McCray on the tackle. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was Osley on the uh, carrying the ball for the Cougars there. Give him a gain of two on the play. It's going to bring up second down and eight. You're going to get folks hurt when you got folks stacked up and the forward progress is stopped and you don't blow the uh, the uh, whistle. That's a way, good way of getting folks hurt. All right. Johnson in a quarterback. Osley still is running back. Hands it off to him. Has a hole up the middle. Crosses the 35 up to the 40. Giving the 45-yard line. Crosses the 50-yard line where the Decatur Red Raiders finally get a hold on Osley. He crosses over into Decatur territory where it will be first down and 10. Spot the ball at the 48-yard line. Four forty-nine remaining in the ball game. Cougars looking to the sideline in no hurry. Play clock at 20 seconds. Johnson mulling around behind the line, telling everybody what to do. Single receiver either side. Pistol formation. Hands off to Osley. Osley's going to break over here to the left side. It's going to be put down after about a gain of six on the play. Second down for the Cougars there. Yeah, ZJ Matthews and Charlie Zalusky. On the stop, Charlie getting up a little wobbly, but uh, they did make the stop, and uh, they got good yardage, seven yards or six yards on first down. Clay Chalkful, running players on and off the field. Johnson is still at quarterback for them. Swapping their two tight ends. There, One's going to one side of the formation. The other's going to the other side of the field. Single receiver near side. Osley standing to Johnson's right. Hand off to Osley, going up the middle, going to break to the left, has room across the 40, up to the 35, crosses the 30-yard line. First down play for the Clay Chalkful uh, Cougars there. He tripped himself on the way to the end zone right there. Yeah, yeah, that's or right. he would have been in the end zone. Yeah, Decatur's uh, 
trying to hit him. Foster Nelson out there doing the best he can at that uh, defensive tackle spot and see if Decatur can't hold him out. I mean, it's I know it doesn't mean anything, but it's 0 0 right now in the second half. Three minutes remaining in the game. Johnson takes the handoff, hands off to Osley once again up the middle, and this time he's going to score. It's going to be a 30, no, a 29 yard touchdown run for Osley. Give him six points, and, and Clay Chalkful is going to lead 42 to nothing. Well, that was just, you know, that was an Olay touchdown right there. You know. Yeah, the uh, Decatur defenders holding up the red flags. And going, Olay, Olay, Olay. Olay. Getting, out of the way. <laughs> Getting out of the way and uh, letting them run through. Oh, there you go. Two-point conversion is going to fail as Osley is given the ball. He breaks around the right side, trying to head for the pylon, and one of the Decatur Red Raiders, Josh Turner. Turner, grabs him, spins Good. him around, and says, uh, I'm not going to let you have point forty-four and that puts him on the ground. That tells you something right there. But Josh Turner, I mean, a little explosive speed and effort. That was an effort play, and – when he very easily could have just let him run in for the two points, but effort play. Good job, Josh Turner. 2.52 remaining in your ball game. Play Chalkful leads by score 42 to zero. Stream of fans beginning to head for the exits. I see lots of hot chocolate cups being thrown in the garbage dispensers as people are exiting out. I think it's kind of kind of a little bit warmer sitting right here next to this press box. Oh, I think that it's kept some I think of the we're wind keeping off each of other warm. Don't be touching up on me, man. <laughs> we need to read the PSAs again. All right, there's the kickoff. Jyron McDaniel is going to bring it in at the 16, and he's going to be bulldogged and thrown over the shoulder of the Clay Chalkful defender onto the ground. For a, was, listen, he was the first defender down there. We had two guys blocking him, and we collided against each other, knocked ourselves off the block, and, and the guy just went right untouched and, and slammed uh, 22 down on the ground. It's, that's just, uh, I mean, what do, we, what do we say about that? That's a big, bad dude right there. All right, Decatur has the ball near hash mark on their own 20-yard line. Ellis still in and quarterback. Keandre at running back. Sturges over here near side. Waller and Brown on the other side as receivers. It's going to be a quick throw to Jaden Brown out there, and he breaks a tackle across the 30, up to the 40, crosses the 50-yard line, up to Clay Chalkful's 45-yard line, pushed out of bounds down the Decatur sideline. Good play for Decatur bringing up first down. Good positive uh, play right there. It yeah, might have been the best of the night. Still fight, still fight. Maybe we can get in there and put some points on the board. 35-yard pickup there for Jaden Brown. Decatur finds themselves now on the Clay Chalkville side of the field. Ball's resting at the Jack or Clay Chalkville 45-yard line. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw once again. Ball's incomplete. Kind of thrown behind Jaden that time. It's going to fall to the ground, bringing up second down. It didn't look like Jaden Brown was uh, ready for that pass. Well, it's the same pass, and uh, maybe it's because that we've been successful on it, but, you know, maybe we could hit somebody else. Change it up a little bit. Two receivers near side, single receiver far side, and Jaden Brown, Ellis takes the snap. Looking to throw the ball once again, Jaden. Oh, oh, hold it. Yeah. Hold it. The Clay Chalkful defender had to grab a hold of Jaden Brown that time to prevent him from running down the sideline. Jaden put the old double move on him, and unfortunately for the Clay Chalkful defender, he bit on the first move. But you know what? That was an excellent play by the Clay Chalkful yes. defender because it's 50, it's 10 yards, 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So. And the alternative was a touchdown, so you're right. It's going to be a pass interference call against Clay Chalkful. Mark off 15 yard lines for the 15 yards for the Decatur Red Raiders. It's going to move the ball up to about the 30 yard line where it will be first down and 10 there. Maybe we give Pooby a chance to put something on the board. 
I would like to hang six on them. And then get an onside well, kick I, and I hang th- another I, six on them? I think that they – I know their defensive line is definitely different. So, All right. Ellis takes a snap. Quick pass out here to the right, and he's not on the same page with Jack Sturges. Jack was running a slant, and Ellis's pass sails out of bounds. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, that, that – uh, I don't think they were on the same page on what they were supposed to do, but I think we got to go more vertical. I mean, we can't run these little flat outs. I mean, post play, baby, post right over it. the middle. All right, second down and ten for the Decatur Red Raiders. Two oh four remaining in your ball game. Clay Chalkful almost jumps. There's going to be a penalty play. There was all kinds of motion. They're going to get us for all sides. 77. Clay Chalkful was doing all kinds of pre-snap movement, and it caused Decatur to jump. So, back Decatur up five yards. 277? Jaden Freeman. Okay. He's a, he's a senior. Decatur breaks the huddle. Two running backs in for Decatur. Banks to men and Keandre. They're standing either side of Ellis. Ellis takes the snap. Quick out here into the flat. It's going to be incomplete trying to hook up with uh, Cage Davidson. It's going to bring up third down. Yeah, just not uh, – you just can't get it in there. Jack Waller now coming back in. and I was kind of hoping that we would get – is it fourth down? We need to run that quick slant across the middle like we did against Athens. Well, I need to get – let's get some yardage where at least Poovey might have a shot at getting the – three because it's a, under two minutes left in the ball game. Three receivers near side, single receiver far side. Ellis takes the snap, throws a hitch route out into the left side for Jaden Brown. He makes the catch. Good pickup on the play of about 10 yards. It's going to bring up fourth down and let's call it seven. Yeah, I guess Coach, Coach Adcock's not going to bring out the field goal unit. He's going to Ball is spotted at the 26-yard line of Clay Chalkle. Hmm. 147 remaining in the ball game. Decatur with a fourth down and seven, trying to put some points up on the board, and you're going to have to have a timeout here. I think he may kick it. No, I don't think he's very happy with, with the guys and how they were moving around out on the field. So, with 147 remaining, your score is Clay Chalk full 42, Decatur zero. Decatur takes a timeout with a fourth down and seven situation, trying to figure out a way to put some points on the board. Well, there, you know, one of the things that you we've talked about this uh, Decatur team, it's, uh, you know, they've never given up and they're always trying and, and you know, competing. And, and it might be that, um, you know, it might be a superior opponent, but, you know, you have to give the Raiders a lot of credit. I mean, they've, they've hung in there and, and doing the best they can to fight around. And this Clay Chapel team is just really, really good. Even their subs are good. You are correct, sir. All right. Both teams have made their way back out onto the field. Ellis. Takes the snap, looking to throw. It's got to be quick, son, and he's going to be sacked. It's going to be sacked around the 33-yard line. Instant pressure put on by Clay Chalkful. It's going to bring up first down for Clay Chalkful around the 32, around their own 32-yard line. A little showboating going on now. They oh, they ought to. Shoot, man. I mean, it's like, did we have anybody blocking? I mean, mm. it's like... As soon as Ellis got the ball, it's he had not one, not two, not three, not four, but looks like they have a new offense, right. and they got all the backups in there. All right. Here Clay comes Chalkful them. has. If they want to kneel down on it, that would be fine. Empty the bench. There's the snap. It's going to be handoff to a running back. He's going to break over here to the left side. It's going to pick up good yardage as he passes the 35 out to the 40, close to the 42-yard line. Big first down play there for Clay Chalk. Well, you notice they quit running. 
running toward uh, Jacob McCray over there. They're running away from him. Yeah. Right. Z.J. Matthews had a shoestring tackle right there. Number 16 is in at quarterback, and I don't have a 16 on my roster here, so I'm not real sure who the quarterback is for Clay Chalk. Was if you got it over there on one of yours? No, it's blank. All right, so. Well, he's low, they're burning the clock, so. Inside a minute now in the ball game, and at quarterback is blank. <laughs> he takes the handoff, please makes a move around him, the 45 yard line. Foster Nelson. Crosses Thank the 50 you, yard line, Thank picking you, up son. good yardage as he goes. It's going to bring up a second down and two situation for the Cougars there. 40 seconds remaining in the ball game. Can Foster Nelson play basketball? That's a tall dude. He does not. Not oh. that I know of. Okay. Okay, you can you can play Chawful with the ball at the Decatur 49-yard line, 21 seconds remaining in the ball game. Hand off once again to number 34 for Clay Chawful. Crosses the Decatur 45-yard line. Jacob McCray makes his final tackle. Yep. Still scrapping and clawing to the end. 44, giving the 44-yard line. That could be the last, and it will be the last play of the ball game. And the clock runs out. So, from Clay, Alabama, the Decatur High School Red Raiders season comes to an end as the Clay Chalkville Cougars defeat Decatur by a score of 42 to nothing. So, a disappointing evening, a, uh, um, but we knew we were playing a very good ball team, and I, I'm proud to say we didn't. We didn't quit. We played until the end. Well, I'm sitting there looking at one of the best Decatur High School football players I've seen in Jacob McCray, and uh, he's just kneeling on the in the middle of the field. And you talk about that dude. That dude gives you 110 percent all the time. Coach Ben Smith walks over to Jacob and gives him a big hug. Jacob was kneeling at the 44 yard line. I'm sure. That Emotional and uh, thinking that his career here at Decatur is over with and probably spent because uh, he, he, he played hard tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's like you can't say enough about Clay Chalkville and they're a championship team. I mean, if they're not competing for the state championship, I, I will be surprised. But uh, I don't know. i tell you what, you know, what I was talking about, what, what kind of team beats this team? Nobody know. in North know. Alabama. Nobody in North Alabama. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> a team, a team that is that has the same talent level and and does just like they do, plays basically mistake free. Mistake free. That's yeah. right. Well, and they they could easily play in the seven uh, A classification uh, and and probably compete there uh, for a championship. Well, that, with, with their level of this athleticism. Was, you're absolutely right, Brent. This was one of the better football teams that I have seen play since Vestavia Hills and uh, came up and played Austin. That was the Knicks team, wasn't it, a couple of years ago? That's who? Pinson Valley. Pinson Valley. Pinson you Valley. know, and they do it with just a calmness and a, and a no no flamboyancy about it. They're, it's a respectful, and they, uh, they know they're good. They don't have to uh, – they don't have to rub it in your face. I mean, they just – enjoy playing with each other and that the coaches before the game were, was telling us a lot of these kids are kids that grew up in this area. They're, they're not kids that moved in and they've just played together for a long time. Well, that's some good sportsmanship. I see some of our guys talking to their guys and, you know, it's like see and, Jacob McCray yeah. walking off and all these guys from, from Jackson Olin. Well, there's some <laughs> play talk. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, there's some lessons that could be learned here by a lot of teams in North Alabama. Clay Chalkville has soundly beaten Decatur, and they are not dancing. They are not celebrating. They are not being disrespectful to their opponent. After they won, they shook Decatur's hand, and now they've made their way over here in front of the band, and I, they're going arm in arm and listening and uh, to the uh, Clay Chalkville alma mater. So, Well, this is a lot, like I said, I, I mean, this looks like a uh, – it looks more like a college team in the fact that every position, it looked like they had an athlete. And, you know, it's, most, most high school teams you can look out there and say, okay, there's a couple of guys out there that 
that, that look like, you know, really good players and, and, and just a handful of them. But at every position, at every position, it looked like that they were, you know, the quality of the athleticism of, of these guys. And not only that, you know, you didn't see a lot of – I didn't see a lot of showboating. I didn't see a lot of stuff that they could. They just come out there, do their job, and, and uh, listen to what the coaches say. You didn't see the coaches getting all upset on anything. Of course, you know, you just felt like – I felt like that that with their athleticism, they could have thrown 50 bombs. Yeah, and, I mean – And they just worked on different stuff, you know? It was almost like that first play when, when they, they gave them time to get up as fast – to speed as he could, and our guys couldn't catch up to him. I mean, it was just a different league. And and uh, and our guys, I mean, to their credit, they did the second half, and we gave up one touchdown. I mean, granted, they were not – they were probably uh, running some clock and uh, things like that, but uh, you got to give our guys credit uh, for hanging in there. And um, I wish we could have got one on the board, but it, it, it wasn't meant to be tonight. But uh, – well, I, I tell you what, this reminds me a lot of when we went and played. Uh, when, when we went and played, who was it? Birmingham School in the and won the state championship. Um, Ramsey. Ramsey. When we played Ramsey, and you know there wasn't a lot of them, but they were all very good, and and uh, we were soundly defeated then too. And but you know I I think this team has more bodies than uh, than that Ramsey team does, but. You know, you have to give these guys a lot of credit. They they uh, they're the best team tonight. But I I really the record doesn't show it. But uh, this this year Decatur Red Raider football really answered the, the the previous two two and eight years. And you know it's just it's you know I think it's got Decatur back in the right position in the right direction. And and uh, we can I'm, I'm looking forward to next year. Well, all right, gentlemen. Well. This experiment now comes to an end. I have thoroughly enjoyed spending uh, these uh, Friday nights with you and uh, uh, look forward to next year. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, if you'll have me back, I'll, I'll be back. So You'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah. And uh, listen, it, it's a lot of fun to, to bring to the to – the, uh, to everybody's houses back in Decatur or wherever you are in the world in, – in, and around Alabama or Southeast, wherever you are. But it's a lot of fun to be able to put that out, out into words and where people that can't get out, they can hear what Decatur's got going on. And I appreciate the, the support of the administration making it happen. And uh, as you said, John, I, I am looking forward to next year. I, I do think we have a strong junior class coming back, a lot of contributors, athletes, and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll have to replace some guys on the line and uh, a few backs. But uh, – well, I can tell you this. If you're a Red Rider, you can be proud of the Red Rider. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Well, all right. You guys ready to send it out? Let's send it out, baby. All right. Well, I am Nick Belovsky alongside John Godwin and Brent Collins. Your final score from Jerry Hood Field at Cougar Stadium in Clay, Alabama. Clay Chalkful beats Decatur High School by a score of 42 to nothing in the first round of the Alabama High School Athletic Association playoffs. Everybody, we hope you have a great uh, offseason, and we will see you again next fall. Good night, everybody.